Okay, quick test, quick test, quick test, one, two, quick test, one, two. Yeah, almost too much, I think. Turn that mic sound down a little bit. The gain is kind of high. I keep also having to keep changing microphones. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and get a little comfortable and close this out. Bye bye, TikTok, TikTok clock. And we will go ahead and get ourselves all situated with the game. Okay, three, four. <laughs> Check one, two, three. This is Pedro on the dispatch. Atención, your attention. It's Pedro, and I'd like to mention I'm on the microphone this morning. Talk your horn if you want it. Boop, boop, boop. I, I'm just in that in the heights mood, I guess, for the moment. Welcome to Kisara's Casual Corner. I am Kisara. So we're starting in on episode three. Uh, <laughs> thank you, I am fully awake. Thank you, Drake. We're starting in on episode three of Tales. We are coming in on uh, uh, Act Three, episode three uh, of the game. And I did I forget to turn on my? I think I forgot to turn on my fan. Hold on. Fan's in the wrong spot. Yeah. I was like, why is it so warm? I opened the window. Everything. And it's still hot. Okay. Cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are on episode three of Tales Back from Preludes. Um, trying to figure out where, pretty much where everything is going. Again, these are just a series of vignettes. There we go. Now it's facing me. Okay. Series of vignettes to get us through where we ended up today. So I imagine Act 3, we were at, what, Clarissa at 15? last time so now now is it okay so i'm going to switch the on, tab my bad i want to tab into it there we go game capture yes okay so we're going to continue where we were picking up at chapter three there you go. Chapter three of Tales Backbone Preludes. So let's go ahead and see where we left off. Uh, I have my snack. My snack is pineapples today. Clarissa, the industrial district at age 24. She was starting to head toward being a boss at this at some point in her lifetime. This is probably where it starts. Um. All right, so uncle says, we're here. And let's see, I will, I will pick number two. This is it. This is worse than I imagined. And his uncle responds, well, it is what it is. No one comes out here anymore. Not much to see other than abandoned buildings and the dam, I suppose. Let's see, no one except us. This will be quick. You lead the way. Let's go with the first one. The dam. I thought this was an industrial district. <sighs> Well, the dam was here first, followed by the rest after. Then again, it's not much of either of those things now. Place is deserted, and the dam is oper is automated. Automated automation automatons. Let's see. And yet, you're no stranger to this place. <laughs> Doesn't make this whole area any less inhospitable. Listen, Clarissa, stay by the car, won't you? I'll be back in a second. No, no. She's a boss. Oh, yeah, she will ask why, because guess what? We get to inquisitive our way through this now. This is no place for you. It's rough, filthy, unpleasant. The sooner we get back to the city, the better. You don't need to protect me, uncle. I am 24. Never argued you couldn't handle yourself. This is not going to be nice. I'm gonna say, I already came this far. I'm standing here. I might as well go the rest of the, like the last five steps, right? I already came this far. It'd be ridiculous to stay back and wait now. Mm. Carlo followed Clement to take you along. 
All right, Uncle says, look, I barely convinced your father that it was all right for you to come along, but that doesn't mean he approves. Like it or not, Clarissa, you're here on a very short leash. Oh, that's right, because we, I guess because we um, allowed ourselves to not be so invasive in father's affairs, maybe that influenced him favorably toward us. Yeah? In the last chapter, remember? Let's see. Uh, no lying. I don't care whether he approves or not. He'll just have to deal with it. I, I agree with that, but why not prove ourselves as to why he should deal with it? My father needs to see I am capable. That's why I'm here. Carlo is old-fashioned. You know that. Having a capable daughter isn't exactly one of his aspirations. <laughs> Neither was having a daughter in the first place. Um, Switched accents. My bad. Yeah. <sighs> he still loved you, Clarissa. <laughs> you don't even believe that yourself, do you? Mm. No, but I wish I could. I wish a lot of things were simpler. Come on, let's go. All right, lead on. All right, so just to be clear, because all of us has been burned by 1990s video games, we're going to double check the opposite direction real quick. Cool, can't go that way at all. I thought as much, but figured why not check, because the 90s hit us all. All right, we passed some trash, a trash can. We can look at the industrial district. A bunch of buildings and some pipes and factories. It's kind of bland and drab. So much concrete, so little life. We walk past some garbage recycle bins, some bottles on the ground, just a whole lot of trash everywhere on the outskirts of town, it looks like. Oh, what up? Empty bottles of whiskey and stale dried plastic. It's been here so long, it doesn't even smell anymore. Let's be real, that's a long time. There's a note on this bin. Looks like warnings, but the writing has long since faded. Okay. We're gonna keep going through. We passed some bottles, some bins, some tires, it looks like. Now we're heading past some walls with barbed wire on it. Hmm. Ooh, Uncle's talking. So we usually refer to these things as, uh, as well, cleanup or a sweep. Of course, back in the day, we used to call it a touch up. Changing terms is good, though. A little confusing for old head like mine, but you make do. Okay, so the terminology changed, but the work remained the same? That's about right. Yeah, of course. Some things always change. They get more difficult. Experience counts for a lot nowadays. <laughs> so what is it that exactly needs doing? I... You know what it is, Clarissa. Surely you do. You're a clever girl. Hmm... I like this last one. Maybe I do, but I'd like to hear it from you so I don't make any assumptions. Um. Well, sometimes a deal goes sour or someone needs taken care of. There are rules and when those rules are broken, well, they need to be enforced. And that's clean up? So we're killing people. Yeah. No, no, it's just enforcement. Sometimes things get out of hand. Some things can't be explained away. Uh, t the touch-up is making sure those mistakes remain unknown to the public anyway. Yeah, clever girl. <laughs> ah. Okay, well, don't be so vague. Tell me exactly what it is. The reason I like doing this is because... I don't necessarily particularly personally like plain, like unplain speak. Like, I get it if you need to be vague for a certain reason, but we're walking and no one's here, so say it. We're going to go kill someone because they messed up. It sounds like what it sounds like. Someone made a mess and we're here to clean it up. Ah, so we're here to clean up someone else's messes. Something like that. So what do we know about this particular mistake? Not much. Word got around to the other capos. Told me it was cleared with your father. All I got was a location, and... Well, that's usually enough for me. 
Mm -mm -mm. That cannot be everything. You're something you're not telling me. Believe me, Clarissa. It's usually better not to know what happened. What about how it happened? Or why? Mm. There are rules. A hierarchy. A system. Once you've been in the business as long as I have, you learn to trust that process. Trust that people are doing their best. Oh. And what if someone isn't there doing their best? Doing the opposite, even? They're talked to. Set straight. Reprimanded by someone in charge. Whatever's deemed necessary. And what if that person is the one in charge? Um. What are you trying to say, Clarissa? <laughs> Let's see. They know you don't tend to ask questions. What kind of work I believe you is? My father took the order. Why wouldn't he tell you himself? If my father cleared the order, why wouldn't he tell you himself? <sighs> ah, but we didn't quite convince him. Man, Clemens thinks your concern is unfounded. Didn't quite convince him. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Because your father is a busy man, not everything has to pass through him. Come on now. We've still got a long way to go. Let's keep moving. Man. Didn't convince him. These are legit conversations. The writing is much better than in Backbone. And no doubt about it. Oh, did I miss something? Oh, no. We're just passing more bins. More bottles, more trash, some staircases. Looks like it leads up to a bunch of apartments. Can't imagine it's ever being a nice place to live, though. Not everywhere can be nice. Some people just have to live where they're stuck. This looks like the car from Silent Hill. The seats are stained some type of stale black liquid. I wonder if it was always that color. Hmm. Stale black liquid. Oil? Gas? I looked at the tires. Still in decent shape. Good to know that we're... Mm, good to know that after we're all dead and gone, plastic and rubber will live forever. This is true. This is true. Welcome in, Mad Mad. We are just exploring. So we are in Chapter 3. I, make, I had to make some throat tea because I was like, oof, my throat, after so much talking, is tired. So we're in Chapter 3. We start. We just started on, on Clarissa's storyline here. And we are accompanying our uncle. We are now 24 years old in this chapter. And we're accompanying our uncle to clean up someone else's mess. That is all we've been given. And we're trying to convince, or we were trying to convince him that maybe, just maybe... He was just doing dirty work and needed to be given more information. But no, all we got was there are rules, Clarissa, and we follow it. How do everyone? Corny Cozer, Corny Corner, Corny Corner, Corny Cozer Crew. Wow. Corny co Cozy Corner Crew. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. English as a first language is rough. <laughs> You're walking up a large flight of stairs. Uncle says, You've never been out this far, have you? <laughs> I know. I know you have, though. Mm hmm. Me and the other capos use this place for all sorts of things deals, arguments, meetings, and and disposals. We all know what disposal means, right? We got it? Cool. English can be a wonderfully stupid language sometimes. This is true. Let's see, what deals do we make? Mm, yeah. Yeah, back in the day, it was mostly about territory, drawing lines, settling disputes, business deals. Uh-huh, and now? Well, your father insisted we get into some new Venues. Money is good, but a lot of trouble. What kind of trouble? The younger, newer crew. Well, 
They, well, if it's not a problem yet, it'll become one soon. They start acting out, getting brave. Wouldn't be surprised if those kids start starting to come here on their own accord, settling their own deals. <laughs> Makes sense. This as is an isolated, safe spot. It's a useful meeting place. Mm -hmm. mm, I suppose so. This is about as ugly as our business gets, so I'm glad you're not... Well, I'm glad you've got stomach. Just don't get used to it. I Even I try not to. I used to be a cleaner back in the day. <laughs> ah, you mentioned Dad brought on a lot of new people. Do you trust them? Sure, we're keeping them lying as well we can. Trust is a spectrum, Clarissa. And we only trust as much as they can handle. It's not like the old days, but it's what the world is nowadays. Trust with as much as they can handle. That is actually quite a fascinating business proposition. I'm just saying. It definitely sets up a lot of potential and a lot of potential flaws. Let's see. I wish Grandpa was. Let's see. Maybe don't have. To, uh, yeah, um, you know what, Clarissa? We are we are strong women. Strong women can change the world. I know this to be true because I am a strong woman. Maybe it doesn't have to be like that. Mm, what do you mean? <laughs> Cunning. There are the way they are because it's easy. No one's put any thought into it. Not one that matters, anyway. Not yet. This is exactly the kind. I see you, Pedra. I see you. I jumped a little bit, but I see you. I jumped a little bit. Show you our stranger. <laughs> I am very, eh, me weird yes weird that's me and you'd be the one to bring about that train am I hearing that correctly oh stronger I am stronger oh you, uncle you have no idea I am stronger yowza but that's some staircase here ascending they didn't think about building any landings no that's it's just straight up core 100% marathon. What We are bears. Bears don't do stairs very well. All right. Let's see. All I know is any better than my father's way. I just want to be the way things done. Not me, you as well, everyone who cares about the old ways. I don't know. If we go backwards, I find that that's also just as bad because reverting to the old ways is not necessarily a good idea. Actually, more often than not, it's a terrible one to some extent because we... Going back to the old ways does not include the possibility of what we have now. So it's better to constantly move forward, but to listen to the old ways, to recognize what was done right, what was done wrong, and pull from that experience to make new better. So my, my thought is, all I know is that anything is better than what my father is doing. Oh, hey. Clarence, Clemens thinks respectfully that you're an angry kid. Okay, maybe, maybe... Clarence disagrees with my thought process. Oh, thank you. Well, but thank you. I appreciate that. No, it's true. It's very much true. All right. I I know you have your differences, kid. We, you may not agree with everything he does, but he does what he can. Now, come on. Let's get up these stairs. The view is nice. All right. We're going to finally make it to the landing, Mad Matt. We're, we're going to get there. All right, there are valves. We passed by some valves. Rusted shut. Makes you wonder how structurally sound this place is. This is a dam. I think. Or a factory? No, it's a dam. This is the dam. This is where, you know, hydroelectronics. This is all good. Rusted cracks. I'm sure the inspection crew is having a field day with this. What was that? I told you, didn't I? Eh? Yeah, I just heard that random. I thought it was one of my own sound effects. <laughs> it was so out of place. I told you, didn't I? You can see real far from here. <laughs> Let's see. The city seems so distant, so minuscule. 
dang. And there's deep cracks in the concrete, too. Maintenance on that thing must be a nightmare. Yeah, this is one of those, you know, kind of like infrastructure things that you really want to get a handle on before 20 years down the line it explodes. Uncle says, perspective. I suppose it's one of the few good things about coming here, eh? Can't get much further out than this. Let's see. Oh, it does look pretty. I industrial viewpoints are actually still quite pretty and they're quite beautiful in their in their wake they can remind us of absolutely the power that humanity has when they come together to create such grand ingenuities while simultaneously also reminding us and reminding us that we are also capable of a lot of the opposite end of that of that spectrum so here look at the view and you're right it is nice good we lose our minds if we all did imagine what we if all we did was imagine what things could be instead of seeing them for what they are thank you uncle clemens i agree <laughs> so enjoy the little things that's your wisdom that's what keeps you going that's what i found or at least <laughs> let's see distraction rather look forward of what could be all right, so I'm torn between the answers. So she says, I'm not so sure. I'd rather look forward to what could be, or you might be right about that, uncle. So enjoy the little things is what he's suggesting. Um, I, am of the, I am of the ilk of personages that, like I said before, look forward. Like, learn from your past, pick and choose the best and worst bits of it to learn and then gain, and gain experience points from, and then move forward. However... I'm also a big proponent of being able to remain in the present because the present, if you look too far forward, you forget what's happening right now, right? So I am going to go ahead and say, you might be right about that, uncle. It is a good idea to stop and smell the roses sometimes because with the way the earth is going, there might not be roses. So might as well smell them all when they're half, while they're here. Kasara said, uh, Kasara said, <laughs> K-Dog said, hi, sorry, can't stay, but still want to wish you a, a, street, a good stream. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming. I appreciate, I do appreciate every time you walk into, yeah? Okay, K-Dog. That being said, K-Dog, you're going to enjoy this game when you get it. And I know you're going to get it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just making that prediction now, everyone. Rip the roses, right, right. Yeah, it's got replays, no doubt about it, because I have to convince Clarence that I am actually stronger than I seem. We're also walking a lot. I have heels. Do you see my boots? All right, I think I am. I'm glad you see it the same way, Clarissa. Maybe coming out here wasn't so bad after all. <laughs> I told you, didn't I? Ugh. Quite right. Come on, then, not much farther, if my instinct proves right. Let's take our time. I'd like to enjoy this moment, if only a little longer. Clarence seemed happy! Yay, we made him happy! I did. I went up all the stairs in those nice heels. Sure did. He says, that I can get behind. You're a good clear, Clarissa. You remind me of your grandfather. And you remind me of him. Hey, hey. <laughs> good. Are we there yet? Not much further now. Almost there. Also, time out. Like, I know I'm I know that probably I don't need to really pay attention to sound effects, but I do hear lots of clicking, right? Click, 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 click. Those are heels, by the way. Those those Oh no, those are his shoes. Just kidding. I was like, whose heels are those? And I was like, oh, it's it's Clarence. Clarence walks fast. Goodness. Clarence walks quick. All right, now we wait for someone to what? Rise up from the dead? Oh, we keep <laughs> we just there. We keep walking. Oh boy. And we have to make it way downstairs too. Wow. I am gonna have some really bad blisters. We check out the view from the stairs descending. You weren't wrong, Uncle. That's one heck of a view. Just a shame it's such a depressing one. Y'all should be on the other side of town by now. <laughs> this is a really big dam. I mean, maybe I've walked Grand Hoover, so... 
Grand Hoover is pretty long. Ish. Kinda. It's not that long. That is not. View. Not sure if that's the city in the distance or just more of this. Well, as fast as, as the Uncle Clements is going, oh yeah, we should definitely be already pretty much in like, back in the city. <laughs> Ooh, nice view. Well, time to mosey on back. <laughs> no. We're at the pier and we take a look out and we say, what's that smell? It's called stink. And then we look down Below the pier, soaked in seawater and partially covered in kelp, rests a, a cocoon of rags. The concealment content betrayed by tufts of fur and skin sticking out between the wrappings. Looking closer at the body, we see a thin, frail hand sticks out on one side. One end, two feet, mangled and twisted. On the other, you glimpse a young face. Whoosh. Turns out you could have gotten a cab this whole time. Oh, yeah. Because we need to tell the cabbie that we need to go find a mistake on the pier. And then we got to kill the cabbie. Come on, Mad Mad. We got to walk so that we don't have to add more witnesses to the body count. <laughs> I'm going to look at the feet. Let's see. The colorful fur has faded, but the shape and contortion of the feet seems, even from a distance, unnatural and painful. Examine the body. Even after being subjected to the elements and tossed around, it's clear to see that the body was wrapped with little care. Loose ends washed up against the rocks to make it clear that only a select of the few wrappings hold the body in place around the shoulders, arms, and waist. The cab driver tip must be amazing. I know, here's a thousand dollars. Don't you talk about what you see. And the cabbie's like, oh, hey, I, I, I ain't sold nothing. I ain't sold nothing. Because all cabbies are from New York, apparently. We're gonna look at the face now. What, you, what little you see of the eyes are glazed over and still. The features are delicate, pale, and lifeless, and distinctly feminine. This is, or was, a young girl. Uh. Uh, she's just the girl, uncle. She's, ah, Shepherd, save us. <laughs> what happened here? Mm. He won't tell us. He says, we're going back to the car now. Okay, that's a new thought process because he said he was going to take care of it and experiences everything. So, Uncle, listen to me. Mm. The car, Clarissa, now. He used the voice on me. We do have to mosey on back. He used the voice on me. You don't mess with the voice. Oh yeah, it stinks. <laughs> he says, careful how you step, Clarissa. The dam is opening. Yeah, he must be really bad in that case. He's sitting there using the voice like I'm in the Dune scenario. I'm like, get to the car. I forget. What's that kid's name? What's that Dune kid's name? The one that Timothy Chamalier plays? Also played by, um, Kyle McLaughlin. Paul! Yeah, thank you, Paul. Get to the car, Paul. Get inside, Paul. That's like his mom using the voice. That's what Clarence did on me. But if it actually his mom kind of went like in that lighter and then like they did that kind of what's it kind of saying i think clarence would probably be more of that get to the car kind of more like odin level of the voice the maybe frankie knows as we say you've never seen or read dunes i only know 
I don't even know that from the memes. Fair. Fair. Dunes is all is a lot. Almost as much as the Wheel of Time series. Oh yeah, it's Drake one of Drake's favorites. All of it is, it's a lot. <laughs> Shepherd, I it wasn't always like this. Apparently go on. D Blank says, but uncle, the the murder, it must be solved. It doesn't be solved. We know that our father did it. <laughs> it's not really solving as much as yo. We are we killing off our own crew now? What just happened? <laughs> Welcome in, D Blank. How are you? We are playing episode three. Need to find a spot for her somewhere. Now you need to find a spot? Good God, we just walked the whole way. Mad Matt says, perhaps a final station literature exchange is in order. <laughs> so our father is kind of like a, you know, a boss, boss. You know, like, hey, go take care of things. But in a more like New York boss, less, less of like Marlon Brando and more of, you know, like Sean Bean going to Mordor kind of thing like that in this case I yeah we're baddies but it's a more complicated than that it's not that we're bosses or a gang it's it's like we help kind of keep the city intact because it's falling apart yeah Sean Bond yeah exactly uh-huh yeah Sean Bond now stay by the car Okay, first off, he was happy for us there. And now, now he's afraid of it. Why? Why are you acting like this, Clarissa? Oh, 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 look. He's got, like, per he's got period points. He's got period points. The voice is coming. Stay in the car. No, this is, I don't know what I just did. I, I put my, my thing down and it clicked for me. So, very sensitive controls. No, this is exactly what I mean. It doesn't have to be like this. I know it's hard. I know it's tough. It's always tough. But you're young. You're angry. It will pass. <laughs> Darn right I'm young and angry. Darn right if it's tough. And you best believe I'm going to put an end to it. And just what do you propose you do? Waltz into your father's office and ask nicely? <laughs> okay, I'm not going to do that one. No. I'm going to leave and start my own syndicate and do things right. So you told Clarence we're going to start something new. You're thinking of leaving the family? Your name? Yes. Come with me. It'll be like back in the day when our name did mean something. Okay, what did you say? He just took over right over this one. The most. He just took over right. So this is English, English, English. He just took over, right? So this is when the most bodies appear. No. <laughs> no, it is not. Uh, we're going to start our own syndicate, and we will stop this madness from happening. Kind of like vigilantes taking matters into their own hands. Uh, I would say kind of like vigilantes if vigilantes were in Amazon's The Boys. And without any hero complex, if that makes sense. <laughs> kind of like vigilanteism without the Vigi or the Lant or the Ts of vigilantes. Definitely a lot less vigils. <laughs> anyway, so... Mob Bob, yeah, more like mob boss and corrupt government, yeah. Kind of like the mixture of those two. 
I I can't listen, kid. I've been doing this my whole life. I can't just up and well, what you're asking me. Please, uncle, you know all this has to stop. It has to change. We didn't convince him the first time, so maybe we can get him this time. I'll I'll think about it. I can't won't promise anything, but I'll think about it. For now, we I I need to take care of that body. Fine. I'll stay by the car if that makes you feel better. Mm. Clemens appreciates that. Maybe that'll make him think about joining our syndicate this time. Good. Just take a thing breath. Think about this properly. It'll soon be over. I know it will. You'll see. All right. So Clarissa's story, we decided that we were going to start stuff, but... Clemens is not convinced. So there is a storyline where we were able to convince Clemens, but it wasn't this one. All right, the next one. It looks like it's going to be Howard. Howard Lotor, third year of college in Gastown. D-Blank says, and we're going to play with fire with fire. Take over, start our own near body pile, meter body pilots, all discreet like. You better believe it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Larry kills me in this and makes me sad for him later. <laughs> Howie, it's cold. Yeah, how are you cold? You're in a... A, like a, you've got mittens. Look, he's got mittens, some boots tucked into it with, with his pants tucked in. He's got a hat. We've got a jacket. How are you cold, Larry? Actually, no. You know what? No, this is like talking to Drake. How are you cold, Drake? Like like that. <laughs> it's like 60 degrees. How are you cold? <laughs> Actually, talking to quite a few people like that. It's like walking through the city. It's like, how are you cold? It's, it's, okay, anyway. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, man. I, I, we'll be done soon, I promise. Better be. What are we even doing out here again? All right. Uh, let's see. Taking pictures. Uh. Oh, right. For your final project. Well, let's try to do it as fast as possible. I got a lead on this place in Yale Town. That'd be perfect for us. I figured we could swing by on our way back. Mad Matt says, I mean, I don't mind the cold, but today was pretty, was pretty brutal. Was it? Oh, how bad was it? <laughs> Investigative. Ah. And Howard says, there it is. The ulterior motive. It's not an ulterior motive, says Larry. It's for both of us. I just want to help you finish this project so you'll stop putting off our hunt for an apartment. We need to get settled on something fast before all the good ones get taken. Taken. Let's see. I'm not putting it <sighs> off. Dude. Every time I try to show you a place and find some lame excuse for why it's not good enough. I mean, I want a nice place too, but we gotta find something. Let's see, Drake says, with better tips for our cab drivers. <laughs> it was cold, but like damp, clingy cold, cuts right through to the bone. Oh, those sound that was terrible. Yeah, I hear ya. I hear ya on that one. I know those rains, those wet colds. No. Yeah, I, I know you're right. I know you're right. Hmm. All right, all right. I can see you're just stressing you out. Why don't we just take? Why don't we just table this until you've taken your shots? I don't want to mess up your final project. Yeah. Sorry. It just sometimes it gets me nervous. Let's get to work. Uh. So this final project of yours, where do you start? Let's see. Right here. Point to the clock. Grandfather Steam? Sure, that's it though. Just one snap and we're gone? No, I think we're gonna need more than that. Some surrounding shots to build the mood, show off Gas Town for what it really is. All right, what'd you have in mind? Let's see. Plenty of characters here, stories they can tell. We'll make for great pictures. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, well, that's settled then. Where do you want to start? All right, let's start with. Um, Let's start the, the clock since it's not going anywhere. Yeah? In that case, looks like we might have a problem. Did you get a look at that good look at that clock yet? 
I noticed one of its hands is missing. Weird, think it fell off? <laughs> By itself, not a chance. Something or someone must have broken it off. Uh... You think? What a weird thing to steal. All right, well, what down then? Well, first off, let's investigate, because guess what we are? Investigative! I guess so. Ready to go? Just uh, for no particular reason, can you run all this past me by one more time? All right, sure. So we figured we stole the hand. Who stole the hand? We get it back. We take the picture before, during, after. We got to make sure some portraits get taken. Yeah, how much do you think you'll need? Let's see. I've got five shots left on this roll. And one we need for the clock, all right? So three portraits sound good? Good. Let's do this. So I need to find... <clears throat> The clock. This is the goddess. There's like an extreme Venus de Milo. Huh. Pretty sure Freya's got a statue of her own in her statuette of her in a, in her dorm. So Freya, this is a picture of the first. I keep forgetting that Freya is an actual character in the game because I'm like Freya is like the North God. Norse God has a beauty, isn't she? <laughs> she? And like the anime, she's like all boob. And like one slice of clothing. All right, so let's see. let's talk to uh, let's talk to these guys. Baco. Yeah, I see you. I see you, Drake. I, that, I see you come in for that conversation. Yeah, I see you. Baco says, "Hello there, young man. I see you're not wearing a mask. It's winter solstice today, don't you know?" Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm aware. That's why I'm out taking pictures. Pictures on this holy night? Mm. Of what exactly? Eh, people mostly. Oh, make sure they're wearing their masks. Can't have someone running around ruining the sanctity of the occasion by making people reveal themselves. I probably should have asked what on earth is the winter solstice, but apparently people wear masks. Like it's a thing. Yes, sir. Mmm, so you've come to warm yourself by the fire? Mad Mad says, I made chili for dinner. D blank, my bones are proper toasty now. It's like Foshnacht? Actually, it might be Foshnacht, now that I think about it. Alright, huh? it's actually kind of nice. This is the flame of the shepherd, my boy. The start and end of all things. We are made by fire, we die in flame. This warmth is what sustains us, the love of the shepherd. Hmm. Say nothing and warm your hands by the fire. You just, that That is the proper response for someone that is saying something that holds dear to them. Say nothing, be respectful, and then leave. That's it. No need to go beyond unless the opportunity presents itself to do so properly and respectfully. You see, many seek out the comfort of the shepherd without wanting to devote themselves to him. They think it's a comfort to give to them, but no, it has to be earned. Hmm, earned exactly how? Hmm. Like I said, by devotion, by living a virtuous life, following the tenets of the scripture, and by singing his praises. Oh. Not much of a singer. Hmm. Aw, shucks, my doctor says I'm not supposed to have tenants. I want to say it is, but it's like the meanest thing on this passage. Like, that's going to pass for me. 100% allowed. That's normal. I'll be honest with you. I don't really know the scripture. That's one, That's fine if you want to kind of continue conversation. Not much of a singer is like, ah, <laughs> jokey joke. And then it kind of opens up conversation. And then, aw shucks, my doctor says I'm not allowed to have tenants. It's like the bottom of the tier there. <laughs> Ooh, a trolley. We should bring those back. Trolleys are nice. Unless, like, they put them right through the middle of a city, then they're the worst. Not much of a singer. Oh, but he, he finds that also equally offensive. Okay. Don't get cute with me, boy. Prayer, of course, is a fine start, but true core devotion lies in keeping with the shepherd and his teachings in your mind and hearts at all times. Uh... So what? Go to church, confess your sins, be a good citizen? Yes, most certainly. That's it. That's all it takes. 
Better than buses, at least? Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pass. Mm. You know, actually, since I've got your attention, mm -hmm. mind if I take a picture of you? I like, I mean, fire is like a really nice light. It feels good. The lighting's really good. I think it just makes for a swell shot. First off, I need to hear the word swell more often. I task my chat with it. Swell away. Swell shot. The solstice campfires are an important part of our faith, boy. If you're taking a picture, you need to ensure you capture the gravitas of the situation. Uh-huh. Which is... The place of the shepherd in the modern age. The shining beacon of truth, order, and justice. The one that braves the elements and shines a light on the path of each of them of us who are pious enough to walk it. Hmm. Don't worry. I'll ensure to frame the fire as a central piece of the picture, with you tending to it as a devout follower. Oh, whoa. Heck yeah, old timey vernacular. Oh, I, you better believe it. Let's see how sharply observed of you, boy. Perhaps I judged you too harshly. Mmm, most definitely. Honestly, man, I think you have me all figured out. Can I still take the picture? Alright, you convinced me. Alright, so we gotta make sure that it's the centerpiece. Side note, it does not go well. I want to zoom in. And... There we go. Swell task. This will go along groovy. <laughs> oh yeah, that festival. Yep. Mm -hmm. All done. I, I'm not too feeling with the art of photography. Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> Don't worry. I am very talented. I did. I actually took many photography classes. All right. Very well. Come by the Church of the Robe when you have it developed. I would like to see it. <laughs> yeah, that's freaking likely. Yeah. Okay. See ya. I think I think he deserves the right to at least see his own picture, right? Here's a little cafe. Say, gang, what just what say we vamoose on over to the malt shop and bus moves? Which 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 time period are we going with? Are we going with like transatlantic, like golden age of movies? Like, say, gang, what do we say we vamoose on over to the malt shop and bus moves? Or are we going with like? 1960s Greece. Say, gang, what do you say we buy moose over to the malt shop and bus moves? Kind of like that. Or are we going like hairspray, 1950s? Like, I can't see. Like that. You know, kind of like, you know, my people meant to me. Kind of scenario. Is that bus move? No? Okay, cool. <laughs> Scatter shot approach. <laughs> All right. Masks, masks, get your masks. Let's talk to Larry real quick. Let's see, uh, let's move on. Masks to wear for tonight, right here. No better masks than gas town. One and all, get your mask here. Two loons a piece. Come and get your mask. They look so real, or wouldn't you? You wouldn't know I was wearing one, or am I? Is he? Are you a lion? Anyway, Shepherd. The Shepherd's on fire. That is a lot of fire that is too close to many of these buildings. The fire marshal would have a field day. If I was a god, I think I'd try to look less creepy. I think I agree with that. I mean, even the goddess looks at least... She's holding fish? Why? Okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. Alright, man covered in snow... Some um, children. Sean, where's the carrot? We're almost done. Don't matter. Some copper is going to take it all down before tomorrow morning anyway. 
This is a conversation we're overhearing, by the way. No way! We built it too sturdy for that! They need, like, big shovels and hammers to knock this one over. Yeah, ain't no way they're knocking this one down. Well, I enjoy this. Psh, then it'll just melt. Point is, it won't be here tomorrow. It'll melt before it's done this place. At this pace, Sean! No. It'll melt before it's done anyway at this pace, Sean. Get the dang carrot! Okay. They're cute. There's a hotel. There's a rabbit here. I think it's a rabbit. But the goddess isn't real, isn't she? Of course she is. She's as real as they come. Nuh uh. Shut up, Paul. You're just trying to rile us up. Nuh uh. <laughs> no, I'm not. A goddess is as real as you and me. And she loves sneaking up on little children, creeping into their bedrooms at night, and biting their toes off. Nuh uh. I told you to shut up, Paul. Even if she was real, she'd only be coming to mean boys like you. That's what Mom said. Also, like, as you read a script and it gets, like, the cold read happens and you just kind of keep reading and then you realize the age that you're reading and you have to, uh, oh, I just, uh, let me just adjust on the fly real quick. <laughs> I'll bet you could build a snow bear if you supported the ears properly. Yeah, exactly. Just kind of pop them up a little bit. D Blank says, even the goddess is, she's holding fish, why? <laughs> That, that is the most classic of God poses, Kisara. As long as they're holding something, they're basically nailed the pose. I, I, the pose is not the problem. It was the fact that they decided that fish was the best thing they had to offer. Not like uh, anything. It's not even like they, it's not even that the statue was built with fish. It was like, she's standing there. She's clearly got to be holding something. They could have given her like a candle, the blind justice thing or whatever it is but instead the town decided that instead of just making sure that she had something to deify her with they said you know what we have nets at the pier let's throw fish on it i'm just saying i'm just saying it did seem less like that was part of the statue's original purpose and more like she's gotta hold something let's go let's go let's go kind of like that <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fish appears to be one of the non-sapient animals in this setting. That's true. That is true. Let's see. I'm trying to see what else is around. There's geezers. D-Blank says, I mean, at least she's not holding whatever the shepherd had, which had got it lit on fire. That is true. So we're going to talk to the geezers. The geezers honked. Observe the geezers to identify their leader. The geezers seem mostly to regard each other as equals, bumping and honking and shoving against each other whenever deemed appropriate to do so. Surely they have a leader though, right? Continuous observation reveals that what appears to be some notion of gironocratic uh, uh, rule, the eldest of geezers, a large one, graying one, appears to be treated with more respect than the others. All geese are equal, it seems, but some more than others. The geezers regard you with suspicion, but soon return to their scheduled gutter picking. Ahem, I wanted to ask you geezers something. Do you know anything about that clock over there? Never mind, because they're geezers and they don't actually talk. I'll leave you to it. There's a lot to see this way, huh? The shepherd was holding a bale of hay and some oil-soaked rags. <laughs> Lincoln. Oh, it's actual geese. I thought you were talking about old people. <laughs> I should make sure I'm always aware of like how I say things to to avoid confusion. Like I'm insulting an entire gentrific <laughs> gentr gentr old gentr group. Geese about as helpful in real life? Yeah, exactly. Like, none, none whatsoever. And we mean geese, yes. Not, geezers is what they call them in the game for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't, don't hit me with logic. <laughs> yes, generation. 
You know what? Let's talk to Lincoln. Mm. Ooh, service is out and back. Is that your standard greeting for some my kind? No offense, kid. But our kind doesn't have business in this neighborhood unless it's, um, well, business. We are not the same kind. No, I'm just kidding. And what's your business, friend? Mm. Me mechanic, all kinds. You bust it, I'll fix it. Name's Lincoln. What's your line? I'm a student, photography major. Good for you, kid. I mean, I might not lead to anything, but it's always nice to know you gave it a shot. No regrets. What kind of pictures do you take? I take beautiful pictures. <laughs> oh, you mean the kind of photos people I actually pay for? And here I was thinking you were just some artsy crap. Well, let me ask you, how do you find folks willing to take their clothes off? Uh, what? I'm sorry, I read that 100% in character, didn't even think about it, and now it hit me, like, in the rerun, because my reruns happen very fast. I said it, it hit me back, then I process, then I'm like, ooh, I'm sorry, what? I... I meant, in a beautiful, abstract sense, composition, lighting, that sort of thing. Yeah. Like museum stuff. He says, so, like museum stuff? I Yeah, like museum stuff. Mm, right. Well, I'm sure there's a market for that, too. People pay to go to museums, right? Yeah, not enough. To be perfectly honest, museums should be... Museums should be free. <laughs> not one hour photo. I am not Robin Williams. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. We're still looking for this key. All right. Uh, about that clock over there. Ah, uh, yeah, Grandfather Steam, what about it? Zero to 100, full-on misunderstanding station. <laughs> uh, let's see, one of the hands is missing. Any idea what might have happened? <laughs> Lincoln claims he didn't see anything. Uh, hands missing? Ah, I wish I knew, kid. I've been working all day, so your guess is as good as mine. Do you think you could fix it? Nah, uh that's a city clock. Any work on that has to go through the proper channels. The whole process usually takes two to three months, but once it does, ka -ching! I ain't clever, but I ain't dumb enough to fix it for free. Yeah, okay, I figures. Mm. Yeah, I'm, um... Yeah, I'm good here, thanks. I'm just trying to find the clock. Thank you, Lincoln. You do you, Lincoln. Have a pleasant day, Lincoln. Okay, that's it. That's as far as we can go now. So we're gonna look at the tailor. Oh, I love a good tailor. Gonna dial down the volume and turn in for the night. This was fun. Have a good night, and I'll see you all next time. All right, have a good night, Mad Matt. It was having fun. It was having fun. It was fun having you here. Mm -hmm. English, English as a first language is very difficult. At the tailors, we say the mannequins in there are better dressed than I am, because tailors. Tailored fits, tailored outfits are the best. Snacky Bay. Best shakes in Gastown. Drake, can we get some shakes? I want shakes. All right, we already talked to the geezers. They know nothing. Oh, we talked to May. Mm -hmm. I think May is a mom. Oh, Leona, please don't pout. Maybe mama will be able to buy you a toy next solstice. Or the one after next. Now, let's stay home. It's a long way back to Weast. Um, excuse me. Excuse me? Are you eavesdropping on us? Eavesdropping? You were speaking loud. Oh, I'm sorry. Was my little Leona disrupting your otherwise perfect day? It must be such a burden to have to acknowledge a struggling mother who can't afford to buy a simple toy for her baby girl. Woo. Mm-hmm. I, I said the wrong thing. English is out the window. Who needs English anyway? Ça va? Uh, these aren't simple toys. They're wildly overpriced. Probably because this is the wealthiest area of town. <laughs> what was that? Oh, I suppose you think my daughter and I shouldn't even step foot outside our little hobble in West End. Can't have us whores upsetting the Gastown gentry with our tattered rags, can we? All right, that got fast. That got real fast. Hold on, time. First off, this second question is horrible in every way. 
Yeah, but why torture her by exposing her to things she can't have is absolutely terrible. I'm sorry if I made you feel unwelcome is the correct response. You think words are going to make up for this? Words are cheap. Words are nothing. If you really want to make up for this, go in there and get my daughter a nice proper toy. And don't forget the receipt. What? I can't... What? I'm a student. I'm a poor one at that. Oh. A student. Hmm? I suppose I should have guessed from the clothes. I don't, I don't want to help one bit. She told me that I, in order to make up for everything, I had to buy her kid a toy. I refuse. I'll say sorry and I'll do lots of things, but that was a little bit much for all that conversation for me. What's wrong with my clothes? Well, they're about two decades out of fashion, which means that they should be due for a revival if you can hold on to them for a little longer, though I doubt those janky threads will be able to hold on for that much longer. <laughs> she... <laughs> She she didn't seem to think so. Saw this a mile away. People are like her. Ugh. Yeah, I, yeah. Maybe I should have gone with the second option, D blank. I'm beginning to regret not doing it. Hmm. But I will investigate. You sure know a lot about the finer things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh what? Oh, um, just because we're in dire straits doesn't mean I have to be ignorant. Maybe I like to motivate myself with the finer things. What are you accusing me of? <laughs> Should I join the dialogue option of accusing her of torture? I know, right? <laughs> Maybe uh, you're a little better off than you're making yourself out to be. <laughs> wait, wait, we had the nobility laugh. <laughs> And maybe you're an idiot. I mean, look at you, roaming the streets without a master in solstice. I hope the god has her way with you tonight. And apparently the goddess having her way with you tonight is not every man's dream in this town. Like, it's apparently like a horrible situation. The goddess having her way with you tonight is apparently an unpleasant experience. Much to many, many chagrins. Okay, I don't believe in that stuff anyway, so it's mm. good. Good, then she'll take you by surprise. Now scram, you're scaring away the others. That sounds like a good time. Only you, Drake. My dear. <laughs> Only you. <laughs> I want to ask a few questions. All right, about the clock over there before any of that nonsense happened. That ridiculous clock, what about it? You know what? Actually, nothing. I'm gone. Bye. No, no, I, can I leave? Can I leave? So what's up with the masks? What is this? It's for the winter solstice. Protects us from the goddess's trickery. And the way things have been going, we all need the protection we can get. What, you really think a mask can help? <laughs> it's not just that. Wearing a mask lets us chance to pretend we're different people. People who can afford to live in this area. People who can celebrate the solstice through giving of gifts. Mm, I gotta go. <laughs> oh, Drake. <laughs> Let's see, Poochie's Reads. Looks like they've got all sorts of knickknacks besides books, too. A nice bookstore. Uncle Lewis. Well, that's a lot of booze. Somehow I doubt it got a student discount on beer, though. Oh, this is Uncle Louis's place from Backbone when we had when we made him go through like the troubles of life. Alright, these guys. Adrena. Let's talk to Adrena. Yo. Yo. Let's see. Um, dope threads. What? Uh, yeah, I'm just, cool. Cool, I wanted to ask you something. Is exactly the awkward response I would give. I would say, no, dope threads. And then what? I'd, cool, yeah, cool. I, I, look, I wanted to ask you something. Hey. Uh-huh. How about that clock over there? That steam thing? What about it? A hand's missing. Any idea who did it? Andrea claims a mechanic was doing something to the clock. Oh? You know, the mechanic that says that you have to go through the proper paperwork and in two to three months you make a lot of money kind of mechanic? Hmm? Huh? Hmm? Huh? Man, how am I supposed to know? Probably that creepy mechanic by. He's the only one I saw messing around with it. All right, thanks. All right. Now, let me ask something else. Can I take a picture of you guys? Because you're just standing here. Ah, uh, I knew it was a creep. Called it a second though when you helped... Hop by with that hop head. Larry's not a hop head. 
<laughs> Come off it. Piss off, boy. Your pal keeps eyeing the back alley like he's expecting to do magic. The same way you've been eyeing us. Alright, first off, that's only because I want to use to make art. Art is magic. Ugh, you're an artist. I like you better when you were a creep. Alright, adds to be this artist. Do you ever get paid for your stuff? No, I'm studying it. First off, I don't lie. I can see the beginning of this PI job. Yep. So what, you just pay someone to teach you how to use a camera? Are you dumb to read a manual? Nope. Too lazy or too rich? Too rich. <laughs> That's most idiots who go to college, but based on your clothes, I'm pretty sure you're the kind of moron who had to borrow money to get in. Yeah, but that was a mistake. Mm -hmm. Well, at least you're honest. Tell you what, hook us up with some smokes and we'll take whatever creep photos you want. Deal? Yeah, where am I supposed to get that? You're a big boy. Figure it out. All right. We're going to go talk to the mechanic for his cigarettes. Hello, geezers. Man, what is with these people? Really makes you want to go out. Once you go with his bad dialogue options and fall out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can I have some smokes, ma'am? Smokes? I don't know. How old are you, kid? Old enough to know when someone tell when someone's shirking off work. <laughs> and we got a pack of cigarettes. You really got an attitude, don't you, kid? All right, here you go. But you didn't get them from me. Yeah, thanks. And another thing. About the clock over there, hmm. someone told me you did it. What? That's just crazy. Kid, look, I, I get you want to solve this thing, but you if, if you got one person saying I did it, then otherwise canceled it out, which brings me back to innocent. Yeah, all right, I'll get more witnesses then. Hmm. Good luck with that, kid. I've been working my butt off all day. I don't have this time to steal stupid hands from stupid clocks. You mean from the stupid clock that the City will pay you ka ching ka ching money for repairing it when they don't know why it's broken. Hmm. Yes, Drake. Someone did say Fallout. I know that's what I know that's where you want to go after I'm done with the stream. <laughs> oh, we got smokes. Here. Yeah. About that picture. I got you some cigarettes. Sweet. Hey, guys. Camera creep got us some smokes. Time to pay up. Yeah, all right. Do whatever you need to do. All right. All right. We're going to take the picture. Yeah, I don't know why the mouse is like this. All right, there we go. There, don't do any weird stuff with that picture, all right? Yeah, I won't. And I'm done. Now let's go talk to someone else about a clock. What's this? Shop window. Pricey. You can buy an apartment for less than what that this place would charge you to furnish it. Yeah, furniture... I will, I will enjoy Ikea. I actually do enjoy Ikea because it's, I like hacking their stuff. Here's the hotel. Got thrown out last time I tried to take pictures in here. Guess they really don't want anyone taking pictures of their clientele. Wonder why. Okay, we can't actually talk to anyone in here. These kids are on their own. Here's a hotel window. I wonder what it would be like to stay at a hotel. Bet the bed sheets smell nice. Oh, yeah, at a nice hotel. Beyond that, uh, if you stay at a Motel 6, I would not smell the sheets. Oh, man covered in snow. You need some help? Mm -hmm. Help with what? Dude, you're covered in snow. Ah, uh, yes. That's just a necessary sacrifice I'm willing to make while testing out this little theory of mine. All right, color me intrigued. Hmm. 
trying to determine if it's possible for one to establish non-transactional relationship with geezers. I'm sorry, non-transactional? Well, you see, every day for the past two years, I've been coming out here to feed local geezers. I felt like we established a rapport, a trust. But the other day, I forgot to bring my trusty seed bag, and they took me at like a common stranger. Dad and I realized that maybe I've just been a middle middleman to them all along, a bag bearer. Maybe they think the you and the bag are the same. Without it, they don't recognize you. No, oh, an interesting hypothesis. One not too far from my own. That's why I've hidden the bag, you see, and staying as still as physically possible. All right, why are you staying still? <laughs> well, I've seen plenty of geezers establish bonds with inanimate objects when there's nothing for them to gain. Statues, bikes, higher hydrants. I'm trying to discover it's possible to develop a similar bond. Hmm. And what are you hoping to get out of that exactly? <laughs> Hmm, I certainly don't expect to be writing any important papers on it, if that's what you're asking. It's interesting enough in its own right to think about geezers and their perception of the world, don't you think? Sitting here, motionless, observant, is a pleasant enough deviation from my normal routine. I'm sorry, I, like a job? Happily retired, thank you very much, and I'd wager, since we're on the topic, you don't have a job to retire from. Let me guess, you're a student. Woo, woo, how'd you figure that one out, Sherlock? Mm. Your voice, youthful, yet yet to be marred by the realities of life. I'm guessing you're here for the purposes of an assignment, either creative or photography. Wow, are you a psychic? But why geezers? There's many questions in every part of this story, and I think it's best to just go ahead and leave them alone, don't you think, D-Blank? D D D-Blank? We're going to edit out when I flipped up on the name <laughs> the blank are you psychic mm -hmm. huh no just no photog just no teacher who knows it's finally a project season and the particular qualities of guest town tend to attract students looking to take advantage of its extremes so was i right what kind of student are you Ooh, photography <laughs> ah a thaddeus rocker i taught a few buildings down from yours the chauncey billingsley department of physics I'm guessing Chauncey, Chauncey was one, an odd one himself, but he was long before even my time. I digress, though. Is there something you need? I was going to ask you some things, Ooh. weirdly enough. All right. Any idea what happened to that clock? Oh, yes. It's missing a hand. Any idea who did it? Man Commercial didn't see anything. <sighs> I'm afraid not. I keep watch for you from up top. I doubt much help. Oh, well, thanks anyway. We're going to take a picture of the man with the snow. Mind if I take a picture of you? A picture of me? Why? Why not? Well, it stands to reason that you would have a reason, in which case I'd like to know that reason. Um, is not an act of photography enough reason? Mm hmm, mm, the act. How do you mean, boy? You piqued my interest. Let's see. So he's the kind of person that likes these weird things with geezers. The geese, not old people. The reason is born during the act of photography. The quality of known after the picture is taken. Art is the expression and such needs no reason. Don't need a reason to smile either, do I? Hmm. I like the first one. The reason is born during the act of photography. Its quality is known only after the picture is taken. Meta photography. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of it like that before. I suppose that's why I never lectured in the arts, eh? Very interesting, my boy. I won't argue. Shoot away. All right, so we're gonna shoot the geezer. We're gonna actually zoom in on him as much as we can. Really, I can't go down? There we go. With crows. Oh, then I think it will come out right. That didn't move, right? It is a lot of white, might end up a little overexposed, but it seems kind of nighttime, so it should be fine. A geezer for geezers. Such dedication. <laughs> All right. Let's go talk to the. <sighs> Baco, can we ask you something? What happened to that clock? It's missing a hand. 
Baco saw a mechanic. Nah, anyone who would leave a state of disrepair, quite the opposite, actually. A mechanic came by a short while ago. Left down the way you came. If you hurry down the street, you might still catch him. Oh, thank you. Alright, bye, so good luck with salvation. He's retired and he can work on all the weird projects he wants now. That, mm. I feel like you and I know a couple things about that, don't we? About people in retirement working on projects. Sometimes retirement is sometimes too much time. <laughs> Alright, we know you know what we don't need to take pictures of May. May is fine. Snucky boy! Alright, mechanic, I got your two witnesses. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the clock over there. Everyone knows it was you. Everyone. Oh man, I knew this was a bad idea. I'm going to be ruined. Achievement for all the photos? Mm. Yeah, okay, let's see what happens. I only have five pictures, though, so there is that. Let's see, I, I guess I just panicked. This is one of the last gigs I have lined up for months, and I don't know if I have enough until the last things until get better. Breaking up that clock seems like a good way of drumming up business. I said, didn't you realize people would see you? I figured they would think I was repairing it, and it seemed worth the risk. The city pays me a mint, whatever that thing breaks down. The problem is, it rarely does. <sighs> Just hand over the part. I get it. I get it. Alright, I'll see what I can do. I mean, you have that much time, you gotta start investing it somehow. I, yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm sorry, give me one second. I want to see something. Okay. Let's see. We'll observe. They have a leader. We check. Let's ask them something. How can we hang out in the street? Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, whoa. One of you isn't moving. Is he okay? The geezers look back at the still goose lying amongst them. It would be macabre, but upon closer ex inspection, you notice it's just a geezer plushie. A child's toy. Whew, that was close. Well, that's comforting. Oh, we can take the plushie. She doesn't, this child does not deserve it, but. The geezers honk and shuffle away as you pocket the paltry, but favorably paltry plushie. There, now another thing. That's it, we can't take a picture. Kasara wants it, photo time. I can't take a picture of the geezers, so there's nothing there. Let's go give a gift to the girl because the, I, while I do not like the mom by any stretch of the imagination, I am not a big purveyor of the child getting punished for the mom's crimes or the parents' crimes, if that makes sense. However, only because it's a holiday and only because I want to seem like a nice person. Hmm. Yeah, yeah track down the clock piece, huh? Guess you're smarter than you look. Wow, that's kind of a rude thing to say. What do you want, a parade? You tracked on a piece of stupid clock. Big deal. All right, this child's gonna grow up to be a, a menace to society. Yeah. Maybe this plushie will be like, "Huh, someone gave me something out of the kindness of their heart." I doubt it. <sighs> so it's not gonna let me take a picture. We're picture this neighborhood. They want to get some fresh air in the West End isn't exactly the safest place for a woman and her child. Gastown seemed like a safer option. Right, can I ask you something else? <laughs> Let's see, why is it important to you to get a toy? Maybe you don't think she deserves it, but I want Leo to have something that's close to a normal childhood, and toys are a big part of that. Hmm, people love saying nice stuff like that. Doing something, though? Super rare. 
please don't say that you're going to help if you don't mean it. My baby girl's had her heart broken so many times. I agree, spare the poor thing. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm trying to get out of this conversation. Hold on. Okay, let's do it again. All right, I don't need the pictures anymore, is what I actually say. But you can have this toy I found anyway. Let me see that. Ooh, that's a pricey one, too. Here, Leona, look what the nice rich boy got you. No sweat was laying on the street. I'm not going to say that. My pleasure. The child, let the child be happy for a second. My pleasure. Oh, I'm sure. Now, I'm. Um, do you have the receipt as well? Is she planning on paying me back? I, uh, I lost the receipt. Lost this? I can't return this without a receipt. What am I supposed to even do with this stupid thing? Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Upsetting. I literally did something out of, like, what I could do. My, the best I could have come up with. And that took a turn. I could slap this woman silly. I'm sorry. You want to return it? Here, why don't you try giving it to your daughter? Like you said. Right? Yeah, number two. Oh! I hit the wrong button. Whatever, you get the idea. Ugh, I can't believe I wasted all this time reeling you in. We were having such a good day until now. Let this be a lesson to you, Leona. Always judge a mark by their clothes. Clothes never lie. Wow. Ugh. <laughs> I have nice clothes. You actually believe that? I can't believe you didn't see it. Now beat it, you pest. We're losing daylight. Hi, my name's Howard. Nice to meet you. Oh, it's so dim, too. What an amazing payday you could have been. Now, seriously, get lost. Wow. Unbelievable. Training her daughter to be a con woman. And not like the Matt Boomer kind of con person. Like, the stuffy old mom kind of old hag con person. <laughs> are we all are we all reasonably like agreeably shocked and dismayed by this? Okay, so I really can't talk to that guy. Unbelievable. All right, let's repair the clock because that's where we're at. I don't know what time it is. Once the hand is clicking the place, it pauses before picking up the pace. Climb on down. <laughs> Larry says, ah, there it is, all fixed up. I'm ready to tell the time. We did it, man. What a weird thing to spend an evening on. <laughs> all that matters is we got to hang out, Larry. <laughs> we spend every evening together, man, usually. You gonna take a picture of that clock or what? All right, not yet, I'm savoring the moment. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Savor the moment. No, no, give me a moment. I'm savoring. No, savoring some more. Savoring further, Larry. Shh, 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 shh. Savoring. Savoring the last of it. Howard. Okay, yeah, I'm done. No achievement for savoring for too long. Can I... I'm gonna zoom in because I don't want the fish goddess in my face here. This is like the least artistic picture of all time. Also, we timed that just before the trolley came in. That would've been madness. <laughs> Fish goddess. <laughs> we'll go back, by the way. Drake, you're the one that said might be a good time if the goddess came up and messed with you in the night like in a bad way so yeah have fun getting this the salty sea air out of your bedroom or something or whatever the f they said the goddess is gonna bite off your toes so get get good luck with that maybe she's had maybe she got teeth like a piranha <laughs> well what do you think it was worth it yeah of course man it's gonna be great <laughs> it better be to work too hard on it not to be. You sure you got a good one? Yeah, perfect. So, did you take all the shots you wanted? 
Yeah, looks like that was the last one. Whoa. Well, I guess we are done then. Look at this crime solving duo, Howard and Larry. Larry, there's something wrong. What, what, what do we have to talk? The whole ordeal with the hand? What'd you make of it? Nah, I don't know. Saw it coming from miles mm. away. Nah. Nah, sabotaging your own work so you can keep doing it? I can't decide if it's genius or idiotic. Eh, did he remind you of someone? Wisconsin, right? Eerie. I wonder if they're related or something. We should get back to the dorm. I'm freezing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We gotta talk. <laughs> yeah, what's up? Let's see. I want to get more serious about dating. Serious diversity is over soon. I'm not sure what the plan is. What do we do when this is all over, man? Let's go with number two. University is over soon, and I'm not 100% sure what the plan is. Ah, yes. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Step one, find an apartment. Step two, move in. Step The next steps are a dance, my dude. All right, and what if step two ends up not happening? Hmm? Uh, huh? I, I don't... What do you mean? All those plans, what if they what if they don't work out? What are you getting at? What if we don't end up Aww. living together? You know, hypothetically. No, I I get what you're saying, I think. You do? Yeah. If you find someone else you want to live with, that's fine. Great even. I'm not gonna stand in your way. Why would I? Let's see. Uh, because what about you? We had a different plan, Larry, for a while. So plans change. It's fine. It'll all be fine. If we don't live together, we can be neighbors. We don't have to be roommates hanging out daily, man. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm not trying to negotiate our friendship. Yeah. He seems like he's taking this a little bit too, like... He's thinking too much. Welcome back, Pedra. Welcome back. We will you missed quite the ordeal with some con people. It was very upsetting. Obviously, I know that, man. I just... I wish it didn't have to get serious. I don't feel like I'm quite ready for all that. I, I could do it like three more years of university, right? I feel ya. Eh. Either way, don't worry about it. We'll do it one day at a time, I guess. I'll come over and beat you up, and you can come over to my place now, and you be I'll beat you up there, too. All right. All right, don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. Whatever happens, I'll be around for you, and you'll be around for me, right? Of course. <sighs> all right, then let's not worry about what will and what won't happen, all right? Nothing's going to break us apart, okay? Howie and Larry forever. That's it. Feel any better? Yeah. Uh -huh. Good. <laughs> We'll be fine. Now, can we get off the street? I swear it's getting colder and darker by the minute. Hey, I love you, man. I hope you know that. Do not hesitate to tell people you care. Because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I do. Now move. I'm freezing. And now we go home. So we... We got the pictures we needed. So now we're going to go into rent whoever's next, honestly. Renee, 3-3, August 23rd. And never let your last words to someone be something bad. Thank you, Pedra. Give me one second. I just go need to, I just, I'm not sure what, I just need to make things cooler. So let me go be right back. I'll turn like an air conditioning on. Let me go tab out. Enjoy Renee's music. I will be right back.
Okay, I am back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> My dog is here. Say hello. <laughs> just, it was just like chill, chill. Can you want to get down now? Here, chill. He's like it's super chill, like right now. You <laughs> say hi. No, that's my pineapple. Go away. Shoot. Can't eat that. All right. <laughs> Covered in dog hair now. It's hot. <laughs> so he was like, can I come upstairs? Can I do this? And I was like, okay, fine. All right. <laughs> it was like, it's like 70, it's like 70 degrees. I'm so warm. I know, Xander. All right. So now we're on Renee's story. She says, Enjoy it while you last, Renee. The calm before the storm. I'll, uh, I'll just lay it out plain and simple. No need to belabor it. Remember, she's the one that was an investigative journalist who was trying to like uncover something that would seem to be fishy with the fires and like the poorest districts. You know what you want to do with your life now. You can't find... You can't be the kind of partner Lucas needs while pursuing that. Oh, is she thinking of leaving him? Oh, we liked Lucas. Sort of. Kind of. The last time it was clearly getting like hard for Lucas to try to like be a cop or in the police district while simultaneously not like allowing her to be an investigative journalist. Yeah, I know. By, we didn't kill him, Pedro, like you asked. We just leave him. I can't fight the system while living as one of its soldiers. At least not for long. Pretty soon the soldier will turn on you. Or the system, excuse me, or the system turns on the soldier. Usually both. Outside arguments, he's mostly supportive. Yes, but have you been? Lucas is pretty much a pariah at the station now, and that's after your editor made all those cuts. Can you imagine how much worse things would have been if you had gotten your way? No, we cannot. That was just something Pedro kept asking. I was like, do you think we can kill the husband? I was like, no, he's nice. He's a good man. There's a How many good men did we see in, in Gastown today? None. Just Howard and Larry. And they're students. I can't do this to them again then you know what you have to do. If this is really your calling, it's the only way. Okay, enough stalling. So here we go. First off, we will feed the lizard. What a day, Lizzie. Mom's going to be out for a bit, okay? Just have this in case I'm not back for a while. Bye, Lizzie. Achievement unlocked, Lizard Mom. All right, we fed the we fed him. Can't distract myself with work. It's too late. Deep Blank says, I mean, if you can spare him the horrors that turn good men, well, in this case, the horrors that's turning good men is that she did her job correctly, which was to question some of the goings on at the police station that seems to be some sort of cover up or 100% the idea that government seems to be more than willing to ignore the troublesomes that were happening in the poorer districts and just kind of letting them run their course, their fires or killing people or covering up killings of people. And she called it out, though lightly. And it seems to be causing him some real trouble at his job. 
Understandably so, too. Alright, let's go to the greenhouse. We need to gather our thoughts. Because this man has done nothing but be the best he could possibly be to us. I know the trope. Poor guy. Yeah. Jabrowski. Hi. How's it going? Don't need to do anything here. I'll miss this view. 420 greenhouse? No, it's a normal greenhouse. We don't do four we don't do 420 here. It's like cactus plants. <laughs> all right, let's go talk to the husband. Let's try to rip this band-aid off once and for all. Hello, Lucas. Hi. Hey. You doing okay? Uh, no, not really. Yeah, that figures. Anything I can do? Uh, just, just talking. That's what I need right now. Okay, sure. Now? Yeah, now. Did you eat yet? I picked up a beet wrap from the gas station on the way home. It's not really a meal. Y no. You don't even like uh -huh. beets. Yeah, well, I wasn't sure if you were going to make food today. You were... You were pretty short on the phone. Yeah. I didn't have time today. Then I guess a crappy beat rap was the right decision for once. <laughs> I guess so. Mm -hmm. How was work? Now oh, you know, nothing like being put back on the exciting world of traffic. So they demoted him. So not only like did she cost like she not only like wrote in a, a piece that was like kind of bad at his department. They also took it out on him, demoted him for for her job, which is a really, really terrible spot to be in. I I do not believe that's that. Yeah, that's just sad. And now it's ruining her marriage. Like everything about what she wants to do. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna get double bad news. Oh yeah. He says, uh, At least it's only temporary. Oh, tell me about it. I'm covering school talent shows and farming events these days. Oh. Yeah. So you wanted to talk about something. <sighs> we need to talk about the way this is going. Us, I mean. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> no, he's a good husband. No, here's, here's the thing, Jabrowski. He's a good husband. I still have no doubt in my mind. He is a good man. He listens to her. He comforts her. They argue, but what couple doesn't, right? But he's always got her back. He actually even provided her the reports she wanted to do to investigate and work. The problem is he's working for a company or he's working for the police and the government that does not want to be looked at in a bad light, and her piece did that. So he suffers the consequences of her. And that's a strain. No money, no honey. He's a trap. He's still a cop. He's got a job. And anyone that honestly believes that, like, probably shouldn't oversimplify the thought process of women in that particular position there, methinks. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know the first one is exactly how I said it, right? <laughs> I know you are. I know you are, Jabrowski. I know you are. <laughs> but if anyone really does think that, check your priorities. No, I'm kidding. But no, do. Anyway, so we're here. And um, Lucas is having a bad time of it. He says, all right. I, st I still don't know if I was ready to hear it. I understand. How do you feel? I don't know. I'm not sure how to phase it. Zoned out? Numb? 
take your time. I don't know, Renee, I think this is the kind of thing that'll take days. Then it'll take days. I can't stop that. Uh, uh. Just how long have you been feeling this way? I think, here's the thing, I think it started when she started looking at that article. That's, that's when we came in, so that's what I'm gonna say. It started when this happened. I have no doubt that prior to this, she was working her way up to becoming a journalist and whatnot, and he supported her every step of the way as she rose the ranks from the beginning of going into journalism to the top. Because you don't go right into investigative journalism, you have to start at the bottom. Everyone does. There's not one person I know that goes from like, I can write to investigative journalism of corruption and the politics of things. No, they all start with like, here's a bunny riding a horse, you know, stuff like that. So I have no doubt that he started off all the way to the top, right? Uh, she started off from the bottom all the way to the top and he was there for her. Likewise, since I imagine that he started at the academy, right, just like every cadet does, and then also rise to the top. So I feel like this article is the singular part that really screwed up everything because he has to be complicit to be there if there is a cover up. Oh, all right. One door closes, another door opens. That's true. <laughs> what was the, riding a horse like riding on its back <laughs> what did you think I said Pedra <laughs> yeah I figured you can't let it consume you like that just let it go Renee you know it gets to me too okay why does it get to you I don't know Maybe it's because whenever you bring it up, you make it sound like it's my fault, my problem. I Something I did, something I caused. I don't want to be blamed for stuff I can't control all the freaking time. Let's see. I haven't blamed you for anything. Maybe you should feel guilty. Maybe we both should. I can't control how you react to things. Don't guilt trip me. That last one, don't anyone say it. That is the exact wrong thing to say. I am telling you now, that's wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> uh, that being said, I don't actually know what the right one would be. Uh, let's do, let's do two maybe. Maybe you should feel guilty. Maybe we both should. Can I? Can we focus on the whole other thing right now? Just backtrack a bit. I feel like I'm being accused of a lot of things right now and it's a lot to take in. All right. What is it, Lucas? Ugh. There's just... Yeah, don't guilt trip me. Oh yeah, that was, oh yeah. I don't understand some things. I, I, I don't see why this is happening. Why you'd want to just end things like this. If you've got questions, ask them. Uh, all right. I just ask that you be patient, okay? I'm trying to keep up. The correct answer is, I promise. Because I think that is the least this man deserves for dropping a bombshell like apparently we are. Because as you can tell, he had no idea this was coming. It is not an empty promise. It is, from my perspective, as me playing the game, it's not. <laughs> Alright, okay, let me put it like this. Is it something I'm doing? Something I'm not doing? Oh, it's a good question. I, I guess it's... It's not as simple as that? Isn't it, Renee? Am I doing something wrong that is a yes or no questions? I just like second guessing your decisions because I'm your friend. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no. You're just doing something differently. Well, that's mighty diplomatic of you. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I said no. What am I doing so differently then? Okay, let's see. What do we have? You are doing something wrong? I don't think he is. I mean,. I would probably say it's stagnating. That's probably the worst thing, but that's not 
in my opinion, stagnation is not divorceable. Like, it's just not. Like, that is, if, if, if you go, like, stagnate and you don't, like, even try to figure it out, that y'all are in the wrong. Like, hands down. Because stagnation just means that you need to move water, right? If, if something is stagnant, tilt it. Create something that creates movement. Create, you know, momentum. Creates a, a force of nature on it. Just, just try something. If it's stagnation, that's not it. So I don't think stagnation is like the only thing, but that's what it feels like it turned into when we came into this relationship, didn't it? When we joined these two? Let's see. He's not doing something wrong. We just don't see things the same way. You have a very different idea of what relationship should be. I mean, I, all of these are terrible answers. I don't even know what they mean. All right, we don't see things the same way. That's probably the most likely scenario because I'm choosing this because when the article came out and everything was going, we tried to convince him, but as the article grew from being like kind of possibly cover up to, yo, I think this is something wrong. Suddenly, we had a real problem of opinion. Uh, of the job, yeah. This is the article again, isn't it? Crap, Renee, I don't know what else to tell you. I don't see what you see. And I think it's unfair of you to expect me to just to, just because it's clear from your perspective. Ah, this is probably the correct answer for one reason. It is clear and concise of exactly what she wants to say. We're getting nowhere is dumb. You're not listening to me is dumb. You could at least expect, respect my perspective, not just tolerate it. That is a real problem. Done. I do though, don't I? All right. If you do, I need you to show it. How else would I know? Actions speak louder than words. Lucas understood that. You see? Open and honest communication, but respectful, tactful, and concise. That is open communication. You're welcome, world. Tails got it right. <laughs> I, fine. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll be more wary of making that respect more known. I'm, I'm sorry, Renee. Let's see. Thank you is a, is a good response. The fact that they're talking, it all proves that they're still in love. Exactly. Like I said, like if you stagnate and don't try, talking is sometimes the tilt that needs to start getting things in motion. And it needs to be real. And it needs to be honest. And it needs to be respectful. That's really the three tenets of good communication. And not just relationships like romantic ones. I, all of them. <laughs> all of them. Friendships. Parental. Children, siblings, all of them. Thank you. I've had a lot of well-stated moments today. <laughs> this game pulls it out of me. All right. All right. Thank you. Is it, I would say thank you because... All right. So what about all our friends? Everyone we see, everyone we meet up with. You met them through me. What will they think? Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna suck is very real. I think Kisara has wanted too much of society. I do expect a lot, don't I? <laughs> Sometimes it's fun to not be well stated. I think that's what this game gets at. It it's definitely it here's here's actually what I think about that too, Jabrowski. Is the fun part about it is technically speaking, there there is a very real chance that I could have flubbed this whole conversation entirely with just one wrong choice. And I think that's what makes it so fascinating was I was able to get there myself doing it. Wait till you see her play Civ or Galactic Civ, oh my God. But no, the, the choices weren't very clear. Like they were very real choices. Yeah, exactly. They were very real choices that people would honestly say in real life, in very real situations like this. And any one of them could have gone off the rails. Like if I had said, oh, you know what, never mind. You know what, I don't think that the conversation would have gone very well and I don't think I'd be getting forgiveness. <laughs> or I saw an apology, I should say. Yes, yes, doggy. Do you need to go out again? Hold on, I'll be right back. I'm still here. Just enjoy this section here. I'm just gonna let him out the door. 
It's warm. It's like 70 degrees. So yeah, so that's what I think this game is. The first Backbone story was good. This one, this one gets, this one gets conversation right. And I know observational conversation is very tough and that's what makes it so fascinating. Okay, they're my friends too. They'll understand and support me. Maybe. But after a divorce, I'm sorry, Renee, but you don't keep in touch with both parties after something like that. They'll have to choose and they'll choose me. Let's see. They'll choose you, and that's that. I can't tell if it's you not having faith in them or me. Yeah, that's how bad it hurt. I have to do it. Hmm. I'm not actually sure what a right answer is here. I guess I'll just, maybe I'll just agree. The male mind. <laughs> I was like, I feel like in my, in my gut too is kind of where I'm going. Like as I'm like, or you can maybe believe that they can try to trust the two of us or something like that. If they choose, they choose, but maybe give it a second. The blank says I would personally choose the first. Oh, interesting. Okay. I was thinking the second. I'm curious. <laughs> Now, now I'm off your gears what chat actually does think. So what would be the response for, I don't know, Renee, you don't keep in touch with both parties after a divorce. Your, our friends have to choose. So DeBlang says he would personally choose the first one. I think I would personally choose the second one. Interesting, interesting. The third one is so weird. It's like... You know what? Let's try DeBlank's way. Then they chose you. Like Pokemon. Uh... Let's see. I don't... Men like to be told they're right by their women. I, I really wish I could deny that. <laughs> but normally they're told they're wrong. I can't deny that either. I think the worst one is when they're told they're wrong and they're clearly not. I know. Oh, I know. Oh, but I've watched it unfold and it does not go well. All right, Lucas responds, I don't know. How are you so set on this? I feel like you've set your mind on ending things and you're not really taking time to consider the consequences. You'll, you'll be alone, Renee. Don't you see that? She says, I'm in pain, Lucas, anything's better than this. I don't think that's true. Actually, I think that is anger talking and I don't like the idea of letting my emotions talk for me. I don't like it. Like if I had to take a moment to come back to this to this question, I would. This this is angry and this is, a, for me, in my opinion, this is, a, this is a sentence that's designed, it's designed to hurt Lucas. So of course I see it. You can't make it alone. I... All right. Tr all right. Walk that back a little bit, Lucas. Yeah, crossing the line. <laughs> no, but, yeah, exactly. That being said, Lucas is coming at me, swinging all sorts of all sorts of stuff, and I'm like, Lucas. No, 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 Lucas. You, you crossing the line too, Lucas. Wrong thing to tell you. Do not tell me I can't do something. I'm an investigative reporter after all. I made it to the top. Don't tell me I can't do something. Yes, I can. <laughs> How about we sleep on it? Let's see, sleep on it? No, I've made up my mind. You're not asking what I think you're asking. I, what's, the, what's that one? 
Oh, I missed that entirely. Look, he's okay. So I said, you're not asking what I think you're asking. Look, I I know we've been distant. That that's on me. Lots of work, lots of exhaustion. Maybe, maybe all we need to do is just I don't know rekindle the spark we once had. Are you seriously asking me to have sex with you right now? I don't think that would help either of us, Lucas. No, I'm leaving tonight. Oh, welcome, welcome to this, welcome to this moment, the blaze. How's it going? Nah, yeah, I'm at number. Yeah, no, bye. I'm, ag I'm agreeing. I was, I was just taking a moment to be like, wow, he really just went in that direction. Like that's a thing. So, Demaze, how are you? We are playing Chapter 3 of Backbone. I'm sorry, of Tales, the Backbone Preludes. We're in the middle of a divorce discussion right now. And it's really, it's kind of heartbreaking, but also kind of, a, in this scenario, necessary. I don't like divorces. I don't like watching the conversations happen. Sometimes they happen in public. Sometimes I, I overhear them in third person. They are unpleasant many, many times. More often, they're unpleasant because they seem stupid. This one was unfortunate. No, not safe before, before goes away. This is worse than kill. <laughs> oh my goodness. Demaze, uh, yeah, so we are playing, uh, it's a vignette of stories, like a whole bunch of different stories that kind of lead to the Backbone series that we played two years ago. So yeah. And the looping music doesn't help. <laughs> She's like, come on, it's worse if you don't do this for it. <laughs> no, I'm leaving tonight. Bye. He's grunting. He says, Nunny, tonight, where are you going to go? All right, let's stay. We have friends, right? I don't know, none of your business. I I don't, I don't think it's bad to tell him that we're going to be okay. I think he loves us enough to still care about our well-being and our safety. So I will tell him a hotel. I don't know what friends we have. Huh. Okay, maybe I should have said a friend then. He says, hotels are expensive. Just stay here, Renee. You know it's better for you. You're right. I do know it's better for me. Hotel it is. I'm going with question two. Because. Staying at a friend's house implies doesn't know him. You know, I didn't actually think about that. I just didn't, I just, I just don't go to friends' houses. <laughs> I just don't do it. <laughs> so, so that, you make a good point. Saying a friend's house implies he doesn't know who they are. You make a good point. I, it's just not something I ever thought of. <laughs> I, oh, by the way, Demaze, I have actually been good. How about yourself? I hope that you have also been well. I hope you're not working too hard, staying safe and all that. Oh, how was the brisket? I know you you did your um, Super Bowl brisket stream. I missed it because of Super Bowl. I, if you're still around, how was the brisket? It looked absolutely delicious. I was able to step in for like two seconds to kind of see where you guys were um, on the smoking process. But, oh boy, it looked good. I love me a good, you know, smoked brisket. Oh my gosh, I'm getting hungry now. Okay. A couple knows all their friends and they would potentially stay at. You make a fair point. You make a fair point. So you know what? Number two. Exactly, Drake. You're right. I do know what's better for me. Hotel it is. <sighs> Lucas thinks there's still hope for you two. You know what? The worst part about it is I think there's still hope for Lucas and Renee too. I do. I think that there's excellent hope for them if they have a little bit of time to just kind of like reevaluate who they are. Once they figure themselves out, especially Lucas and where he stands, maybe they might actually stand a chance. I actually do think that Lucas and Renee could make it, but it's going to take some work. It'll take some work, especially when they have to get used to the fact that they're going to clash on a lot of things, especially if they're going to keep the jobs they want. He says, I listen. I see where you're coming from. I just don't think it needs to be as final as you're making it. I'll wait. Well, you know, there's there's counseling for this sort of thing. Therapy. You hate therapy. I know. I just figure that if that's what it takes, I'm willing to try it. That's 
that's actually kind of important to me. Willing to try, trying, and then if it that doesn't work, makes sense. But I do think the space is a good idea. I think separation to like let themselves be like, I need to clear is a good idea. Anyway, he says, I'm willing to try it. It's too late, no way. You can't just do it because it's the last resort. That, however, I also agree with. You can't do it because it's the last resort. But listen, I, I get it now. I didn't think I needed it before, but now I understand. I'm okay with doing counseling if that's what it takes. We wouldn't be doing it for the right reasons. I, I don't agree with the second option. This is neither a compromise nor an ultimatum. It wouldn't be doing it for the right reasons. I think Lucas would be doing it for the right reasons. Saving, doing what you can for a relationship that clearly still has potential, I think is still valuable process to do. So I'm gonna go with, I'll think it over, but I need to get out of this apartment. I can't stay. That absolutely needs to happen. Why? Just be here with me. I can we can work it out. No reason to go already. Now I'm so, now I'm torn. I am torn. Okay. So now I actually need chat's help. I can choose no I'm going today or I can choose no or I'll think about it with the pause. I don't know which one I want. I want to. I want to I want to give Renee and Lucas a chance. <laughs> Jabrowski just just clicked two already. You know you want to. I I I am a big purveyor of like believe after having been like on the receiving end of not like a divorce, but like being on the receiving end of like this and like knowing that they're like I've just decided that this needs to happen. It, it's really painful to just be like, wow, you're not gonna even try. Like I've offered solutions. You're not gonna even try like to just be shut down like that. It hurts a lot, you know? So yeah, two. Okay, thank you. I, okay, so I'm not crazy. I was like, I, I can say two, right? <laughs> I'll think about it. You're crazy. <laughs> Demaze is like, you're crazy. You're willing to try? You're willing to try things? How could you are so crazy? <laughs> All right. That being said, I'm leaving the apartment because after a conversation like that, one needs some space. He says, good, good, good. Thank you. I'll, I'm going to sit here a bit. Maybe find a counselor in the paper or something. Okay. And that's all there is to it. And we leave with our head high and we cry. Jabrowski said one, please. He said, I'm sorry, Jabrowski. I just said, okay, and most on it. I moved on. Okay, there's no getting away from it now. You can do this. I went to the wrong spot. <laughs> what, Every, the whole rest of the conversation was stressful. I was like, all right, good, let's move on. I fed the lizard already, so it's okay. We're gonna enter the not 420 greenhouse. All right. We, where is where is the outside? Where where is the where is the door? I, okay, so so we went through all that to not be able to find the 20. It's gonna be a 420 greenhouse after this. I don't even don't even. So is the, where is the, where is the, f <laughs> okay, so we went through a whole divorce conversation and I can't find the front door? Oh, okay, no, I had to go to our office, okay, Whew. Yeah, wholesome greenhouses only, exactly. You let Lucas be after, oh, hold on, we'll go back. So we let Lucas be after the breakup we did not choose to stay lucas understood your point of view but he didn't share it he still thinks the relationship could have been fixed you insisted on discussing the case with lucas i was like that's from the previous chapter okay okay that was stressful that was so stressful okay 
Okay, so we have one more chapter to go through. I need to... I'm stress eating. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to crown apple. I'm stress eating. That was a lot. I hope we're... I hope we're all okay. We're gonna take a moment. I need a moment. Mm-hmm. Thank God that music stopped. The music's not too bad, but it is loopy. It is very loopy. Okay. Okay, okay. No, one more bite of stressed pineapple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. I love, I love pineapple. Mm-hmm. All right, we have one more branch to get through. Here we go. We have to do Eli, the scientist. August 22nd, the dig site. Last week, we did all those scientific experiments on the creature trying to find sapiency versus sentiency. Oh. Jorge says, radio says they're on their way. Should be less than 12 hours now. I'm sorry, what? Who? What? We started coming out swinging on this one. Who is they? No idea. But if they're going to bring something back from outside the wall, it's probably someone at the top or above it. Hmm. So, which is what we are now? Yeah, someone's coming. It's going to take 12 hours. I'm very nervous. All right. So, um... I guess they're coming to take our place? So, uh... We hopefully don't visit the dam soon. I... Mm, Oh, Drake. Oh, uh, no. I don't want to visit the dam. That was horrible. But it's not you know, as horrible as the, as the divorce conversation. But yeah, Clarissa was like, I can change the syndicate. All right, I'm going to have some home-cooked meal, fresh vegetables, homemade sauce. That sounds glorious. Right? Let's see. Did I still name discoveries after people who found them? Yeah, because we discovered a creature with sentiency. With sentiency. Now, sapiency, we have no idea. But we have sentiency. Let's see. As soon as we get back, let's go to dinner somewhere fancy. Because I love food. And <gasps> can't wait to sleep in a proper bed. With pillows. A duvet. Uh-huh. Okay. Earth to Jorge. Do we gave our scientist the realest trait, by the way. So he, Jorge says, do you, do you follow the scripture, Eli? Remember, faith is a really big deal in this place, especially one that's pretty much run by the government. Saint, uh, hold on a second, sorry. What is this? There we go. Do you follow? What's the difference? Oh, sentiency is when you, when uh, an entity is um, stimulated with external sort with external circumstances. So in this case, the creature we hit it with heat, we hit it with salts, we dried it out, and it had a reactive property. Um, like heat made it go aggravated. Sapient is when um, you have the ability, or when a creature or an entity has the ability to think about abstract concepts. Sapient also, I don't know if we ever discovered it was sapient. We just knew it was sentient. Like, we, we did all of the chemicals and the heat stress tests and all that kind of stuff. We did a lot of stress tests. Stress tests is usually what helps to determine sentiency, whether something will react a certain way. So, um... You get burned, right? You're, you, someone puts fire on your arm. Oh, you burn. You, you react. You might not be thinking about it, but your brain synaptics will tell you, get away from fire. So you have a synaptic tendency. Sapiency is if you were also to take that synaptic tendency and identify what's happening around. Okay. 
We do not follow scripture. I don't follow anything I can't see. Which I, I don't believe entirely, but as a realist myself, I'm just more like, I don't follow blindly is what I actually believe. They, there is proof to be had. Sapiency would be hard to measure. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's kind of like, action. basically our actions helps us to determine how we do things. It's kind of like if you watch an octopus, for example, right? That alien species, the octopus. It seems weird that they're as capable as they are. You know that they're definitely sentient because they react to a lot of things around them. But the fact that they, like an octopus can figure out how to open a jar, how to get out of its cage, how to respond to stimuli after repetitive situations, like, like identifying triangles versus squares, you know, sapiency is that direction. <laughs> but yeah, it's not really something that has like a full grasp on it. Testing the air, yeah. <laughs> I like octopus better. <laughs> less likely to take our jobs okay jorge says in response to i don't follow anything i can't see jorge says i can appreciate that growing up in the west end it was always comforting to believe that no matter how bad things got the shepherd was watching over us i'm beginning to think that might not be the case anymore are are you familiar with the story of the sighted skeptic no what's it about Years ago, before the creation of the wall, the shepherd would scour the wasteland, guiding lost followers through the mountains toward the promised land. The path was treacherous and the elevation so high that each follower would inevitably become blinded by the sun, forcing them to rely entirely on his voice for guidance. Yeah, exactly. Something that can be taught, learned, and then abstractly taken backwards and, and, and spewed out. Okay, so realist in me says, so why didn't the shepherd also lose his sight? Because he's a shepherd. Well, isn't that convenient? <laughs> when the Blade Runner asked the robot Rachel what she wanted to do, what she wanted to do if B is her heart is her arm, if a B hits her arm, oh yeah yeah yeah. Oh man, I have to go back and watch. Yeah. Yeah. Drake, we might have to put Blade Runner back on the list of things to watch. <laughs> just, we might have to put that back. Or I can just go, like, reread, uh, you know, do Robot's Dream of Electric Sheep. <laughs> I wanted to watch them first. Oh, that's right. Well, now we've got to push it up the list. All right. So he's a shepherd. Makes him impervious to UV rays? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Because blind faith, that's what we're asking. And once they reached the city, the shepherd promised to guide them toward the ocean where their sight would be restored by the healing waters of the great blue. Mm -hmm. One year, a follower named Micah was so afraid of losing his sight, even temporarily, that he covered his eyes with bandages and to advance and protect them from the raised sun. Oh, smart man. I like Micah, Micah's good. Once the flock descended from the highest point on the mountain, Micah began to remove his bandages. Finally able to see, Micah became acutely aware of all the dangers that surrounded them. He started screaming words of warnings to his fellow travelers, causing them to doubt the shepherd's calm directives, leading some of them to misstep and tumble down the mountain toward their death. Mmm, shake my head sadly. This chaos caused Micah's warnings to become even louder, more hysterical. Even more of the followers began to lose their footing and began to fall. This, desperate to stop this carnage, the shepherd marched toward Micah and struck him with his staff until he fell unconscious. Wow. Mm. Yeah, that sounds... I would actually probably do the same thing. <laughs> with Micah's silence, the followers were soon able to continue along the path, following the shepherd's calm and trusted voice toward the city, where their sights were soon restored and the rest of their days spent in health and prosperity. Mm, go back. What happened to Micah? It's believed that Micah remains at the top of that mountain to this very day, where he screams into the void, too paralyzed by fear to move forward. Uh-huh. Wouldn't Micah be dead by now? I wouldn't say that. But what's your point? Well, much like Micah, 
we have now seen things we weren't supposed to see, which makes us a liability. Ah. I, okay, now I get this. That was a nice, that was a nice, uh, not parable, parables with, no, actually parable, right? These, because these are people, that was a nice parable. I like the parable. The parable of Micah and the shepherd actually is a pretty good one. If you're going to go basing on, like, any sort of illustrations, I like that one. That's a pretty good one. You're talking about the artifact. Not exactly, though that may be part of it. I'm talking about leaving the city. That we know what it's actually like out here. Wait, that makes us a liability? I thought, oh, that's right. They don't really let people out the city, do they? <gasps> How does that make us a liability? Maybe we can figure out something from there. How many people can you name who have gone to the city after leaving it? I, I, yeah, I, I can't. We'd be the first. And why do you suppose that is, says Jorge? Why has no one else come back from beyond the wall? Because it's dangerous. They, they fall to the elements. Really? Where's the danger? The only real hazard we've encountered so far is that artifact. And we had to learn how to work very freaking hard to find that. Outside of that, everything's been fine. Peaceful, even. I honestly feel safer here than I did back in the city. Which begs the question, why hasn't anyone ever come back from that place? Okay, you tell me. This is just a theory. But here's what I'm thinking. Back in the city, we're penned in. Cornered, easy to control. The apes own all the land. So all we have to do, all uh, so what we have to do is whenever they want, just to borrow a sliver for our families to sleep in. Scarcity is key, Eli. If the people knew there was a world outside the city, a safe, dusty, perfectly normal world with space enough for all of us, the entire system would collapse. <laughs> so, so, so what's all this about? Control, real estate, in a way. If you could leave the city and start your own thing, wouldn't you? Uh, the city is all there is. Let me ask you something, Eli. Why do you suppose you were assigned to this detail? Uh, my supervisors wanted me to get more fuel experience, right? 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 Because you're filling our head with conspiracies that are starting to sound really legit here, Jorge. You need to stop deluding yourself, Eli. No team has ever come back from behind the wall. We are on a suicide mission. For an outsider like me, this was always going to be the retirement plan. That's just how Science City works. But you're still young, connected. You must have upset someone really powerful to get a sign of detail like this. So what happened? I may have mentioned that a new drug side effects outweighed its benefits to the CEO at an investor meeting. Right? That's, Drake, that's normal, right? Drake, just to, like, you know what? Drug side effects is really, really terrible and it's not really gonna help what it's actually designed for. So you still wanna invest? Shepherd staff, you're the reason they pulled the funding on Ligotti? <laughs> I heard that instead of curing depression, it caused so much abdominal pain, test subjects would beg doctors to save their lives. And they figured they, would, they could market it as a restoring a will to live. First off, that is a wicked thing to do. That is a wicked thing to do. They tried to cure depression, but instead decided to market a drug as Restoring your will to live? Are you kidding? That is a wicked drug. That is a wicked, wicked group. Yeah, the dam is looking closer every second. I know, right? Yeah, short off the stock. Yeah, exactly. That, that was a short stock if ever I heard one. Yeah, the, the dam, we might actually end up in the dam in chapter one. Oh boy. <gasps> Theory. For anyone that wants to play the Backbone series, this theory is going to be a spoiler for the Backbone. So, here goes. In five, four, three, two, one. Remember in chapter one of, of chapter three at the beginning in Clarissa's thing that she said she wanted to start her own syndicate. And remember, 
in Backbone, she's in charge of the artifact. Who's the one that probably brings it to her? These guys. From the pier. Maybe that's how we meet them. All right. Spoiler theory done. All right. So, <laughs> short the stock on Ligotti, apparently. And let's see. It also made patients confuse their dreams with reality and not in a fun way. Oh, wow. Well, crap, Eli. Here I was thinking you were some stuck-up fail son. It turns out you were a hero the whole time. Yeah, no, I'm not a hero. They're still planning to release it next quarter. <laughs> what? Wow. This city is so screwed. I'm surprised it's living. Jorge says, well, either way, it proves my theory. We're both beyond expendable in the eyes of HQ. Honestly, I'm surprised it didn't kill you already. Okay, well, one thing you can say about HQ, they really know how to melt their resources to the last drop. You know, as HQ does. Right? Right? I self-employed, I don't know. So, what do you want to do for your last 12 hours? Um, I want to find a way out. <laughs> I don't sit there and like, I'm going to wait to die. I'm just going to wait for them to come and shoot me at the docks. All right, I was hoping you'd say that. So what's the plan? How do we fight this? Okay, so what are our options here? Convince them that we're indispensable, that we need our expertise for to keep the artifact alive. We wrote down everything in a book, so not likely. We kill whoever's coming before they kill us. I don't believe in murder, is a general rule. Let's convince them that we killed it. That way, we have to stay out here and keep digging. Or what if we made the artifact really agitated that way they'd be afraid of being left alone with it okay so i'm liking i'm liking three and four i'm liking three and four a bit when the mob escorts you to an empty room <laughs> legit right okay 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 so i'm thinking i'm liking three or four i'm liking three or four one obviously because we literally mark everything down in a book no point not no point in saying that we're expendable not expendable because it's like oh we have everything right here all right however convincing them that we killed it so we have to stay out here and keep digging i'm not actually sure that that's a thing so what if we made the artifact really agitated that way to be afraid i think that's the best option i think that's the best option for everyone that's involved people get to go home we don't have to kill everyone you try convincing the visitor that the artifact's too dangerous. Perfect. We don't have to lie. We don't have to murder anyone, right? Hmm, yeah, that might work. They need us to come back to help them keep it under control. We could buy us some time and maybe a bit of clout. We'll have to be convincing, though. You like to? We have a sentient artifact, which they know nothing about. We could use that. I think... Wait, wasn't choice number two to murder them at sight? <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, this one. Okay. <laughs> the murder. <laughs> I forgot certain mur number two was like, kill them before they kill us. All right, let me see. I don't see any other option, including two. Let's do it. All right, all right. All right. Now, they're probably going to go through the entire site to make sure we're telling the truth. So, you, oh, is that what it was? <laughs> no, I see. Oh, so you just just throw the artifact at them. Just here, catch, and then they catch it, and it's like, oh, death, instant. Like they're catching Medusa. <laughs> we'll need to test the artifact, right, and take notes. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. We've already done the testing. That was a whole chapter on that. Come investigate. They just bash on their heads open. Oh, yeah. Okay, so they're going to go through the entire site to make sure we're telling the truth. So you need to make sure everything on the site sells the idea that the artifact is dangerous. Okay, how do we do that? Make sure our journals, research materials, and the artifact line up with the expertise we're trying to sell. Any contradiction to our story will get us killed. All right, let's get everything in order if you need me. All right, let's do it. All right, let's start with the journal. Oh my God, the music... That drum, <laughs> the drum freaked me out. And I was like, what? It, it got intense. I felt that in my heart. I felt that drumming in my heart. It was, it was intense. 
Where's the rest of the light? Here we go. Light, please. Thank you. All right, let's go to the tent. Oh, that's that's just getting rest. Okay, okay, okay. First, we go to the journals. All right, let's read them. These are your personal thoughts from the last six months. Every peaceful moment in the tent captured here. Every last doubt and worry put into words. The first entry catches your eyes, one that you made the morning of the discovery. It describes your concerns with excitement about the future of your work. The next entry of note you find is far more colorful, written the morning before you began experimenting on the artifact. Intense Kisara, we could be on the Leo <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, where's that where's that drug that the company is gonna make to give me my will to live? Like that that's like an adrenaline shot to the heart. Alright, here we go. So the a paragraph of the entry seems almost thankful to HQ. The waste clearly as hostile and lifeless as he told you to be. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we'll keep reading that one. The next part specifies which one of you is a driving force behind the experiments. All right. The next page, still from the same entry, contains some choice words regarding HQ about their ineptitude. Hey, we'll take that out. We don't need that. Pressing your thumb against the gutter of two pages, you slowly tear out the question. The correct question. All right, the next few pages are blank. There's room for more entries, or at the very least, one for tomorrow morning. Okay, I think that's okay. Yeah, we gotta rip some pages out. Yeah. Wait, I, 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 I want to do this again. <laughs> All right. The first entry catches your eye. That's fine. Before experimenting. All right. So this section here, a paragraph seems thankful to HQ. The wastes were clearly as hostile and lifeless as you were told they'd be. So. So do we rip out my, ooh, so my next question is, do I rip out that other page that says, so I'll review it again. Oh my God, this section is gonna take me so long. All right, keep reading. And then colorful, that's fine. This one, a paragraph of the entry seems almost thankful to HQ. The weights were clearly as hostile and lifeless as you were told they'd be. I gotta think on that one. Should I keep it in? Should I keep it out? Take it out? Let's let's do something else. Let's toggle some... Okay, let's not toggle the lights. Alright, let's check the artifact. Even after some time and after all your experiments, you still aren't used to it. To think that so much of your life is centered around this strange ooze-like thing. Something within you shudders. The discomfort is unavoidable. Take a closer look. Okay. We are basically, yeah, we have to sell this as dangerous as possible. Something to scare them into, into it. So I was wondering if maybe I should take out that one page about HQ. I'm thinking I might. I think I need to take it out. But I'll go back to it and double check again in just a little bit. You catch glimpses of the creature inside the pod as it sways slightly from side to side as if watching you. All right, we're going to observe it. As you lean in, the humming emanating from the pod swells. It begins to drown out your senses and your body begins to feel tense. Yeah, that's the yeah, that's the part that's throwing me off too. The thankful part. It's like it's definitely hostile and whatnot. But I don't think it's the, the but that page is not describing the artifact itself. I think it's describing the wastelands. So I think we can take it out and leave it at this was the morning of our experiments. 
and just go from there. Mystery, right? Mystery and the unknown makes things scarier. I think I'm gonna tear it. I think I'm gonna tear it out. Let's see. What if I give into the sensation, which makes me nervous? You begin to perceive cracks in the humming, ranging from irregular to something oddly rhythmic, as if a language is being spoken to, as if you're being spoken to it. You start to feel the onset of a pounding headache as your blizzard blurs ever so slightly. The creature inside begins to move, slowly covering the glass window. It undulates gently, almost beckoning you towards it. And we're gonna back off, because I need things to do. Let's see. We insert a thing pacifying it, or we increase the pressure in the pod agitating it. Let's agitate it. Because we gotta make it look scary, right? The more it moves, the scarier it looks. Twisting the valve, the creature does the same. It folds over itself, solidifying. Thin black pseudopods lash out at the glass. It's certainly agitated now. All right, and then research. Hold on. I'm gonna go take out that journal piece first. All right, review. All right, the next entry of notes is more colorful, the morning before you began, and then tear out this page. We just didn't keep any journals. I was happy. I was happy, and then suddenly I did not write anything down. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if that was the right choice. Blame Lang says, what if, what if you did it? <laughs> what if you put it back? <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain that that page was about the waste and not the artifact itself. And if it is, I don't think it, that makes it scary. I think the thanking HQ for telling you that we were going to be in trouble about the wastelands. I think I might have done that sarcastically because I vaguely remember it being a sarcastic comment when I chose it two day, like a week ago. So, so there is that. All right, research time. You open the research again and are once more greeted by that familiar concoction of smells, hot plastic sanitizer and dusty paper with leaded ink. All right, so let's read. Let's read our entries first. Nope, yeah, read. Mm, all right, read our entries first. Starting the day you set out on this expedition, the ledger has been regularly updated with notes and results at the work of your red sites. The entries themselves are granular in detail, amounting to a read that isn't particularly interesting for the uninitiated. All right, continue reading. Toward the very end, however, mentions of the artifacts start appearing. One entry in particular catches your attention, being 10 times longer than most of the others. Before I continue, D Blank says, right, but I was thinking on it more, on it solidifying their claim that's everything being inhospitable and outside the city. I thought about that too, but the thanking them part is what is what I think cinched it for me. Because I didn't want to give the impression that there was anything to be grateful for or anything that could unleash the to lighten the burden. Right? So when you thank someone for a warning. It's like you a burden was released from you. So that's what that's what that's what did it for me. Was the thank you. At least for me. <clears throat> like thank you for letting us know that I needed to make sure I bring my coat on a cold day. I know exactly it's, it's rough, right? I'm like, "Oh, no." <laughs> All right, toward the very end, however, artifacts start appearing. On one particular entrance, starts their day 10 times longer. You wrote this on the first day of your experiments. We read. Your conclusion was that the artifact was too dangerous to bring near civilization and that should be kept at a safe distance. That was our choice from last Friday. My brain cannot. <laughs> the rest of the entry specifies how such containment could be achieved 
mentions a small team of scientists being relocated outside the walls led by you and Jorge. Mm-hmm. Okay, see if there's anything else. Nothing else catches your eye. If anything, the collected information this ledger could be an incredibly handy guide for any future excavation of this type. After all, you two made it very... The two of you have made every mistake conceivable as well as how to correct them. Oh. There is that. All right, we'll come back to it. We'll do it again. Hold on. We gotta... We gotta... <laughs> There's so much to... Okay, examine the research. Compared to your personal notes, the research and levers are heavy and imposing, like a set of encyclopedias. Samples, notes, and a number of strange findings in plastic bags are stuck in and sheltered betwixt the pages. Okay, let's read. Let's read. Starting with the day you set out on this expedition, the ledger has been regularly updated with notes of your dig site. Granular detail, yada, yada, yada. Toward the end, artifact... One entry in particular, catch your attention, being ten times longer, okay. Your conclusion. Your conclusion was that the artifact was too dangerous to bring near civilization, and that it should be kept at a safe distance, how containment could be achieved, and a small team of scientists being relocated to outside the walls led by us. If anything, collected information in this ledger could be an incredibly handy guide for future excavations of this type. After all, you two have made every mistake conceivable as well as how to correct them. <sighs> so, we know that this ledger is important to how dangerous it is. It needs to be there because we definitely tell them, don't bring it there, be here. But we also gave them the answers on how to actually do everything. I don't know what to do. I can't not have the thing that says it's clearly dangerous. That needs to be there. I know, I know. There's a manual for why we should be sent to the dam. <laughs> okay, okay. Hold on. Oh, 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 oh my god, this is so... Ah! Why did the developers write this so well? Okay. First off, I don't like the fact that my choices are being used against me. <laughs> I made these choices on Friday. I should be allowed to have made them today. And it wouldn't matter because they're from chapter 2. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna... It's gone. Tainted. One. Poof. Poof. Stress pineapples. Stress pineapples. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I made the conclusion. It's definitely right. It's right there. I said, don't take it in the city. Mm-hmm. I also wrote, we should be the leads. Mm-hmm. That's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. How dare they logic me? Mm-hmm. All right. What else do we need to do? We agitated the artifact, it's dangerous, and we took out the one page that said, thank you, HQ. Oh, oh! Can we change our mind? Okay, we have the option then of changing our minds. Instead of convincing them that the article, that the artifact is dangerous, we can convince them that we are the ones that knows what we need to do. That would make that last page okay. And I think we can get away with the, with the tearing out of the other page. Because we definitely didn't want anything to be like... Hmm. Let's convince them that we're experts essential to understanding the artifact. Yeah, I'm thinking we should probably switch. But now my question is, 
if we're going to show that we can keep it under control, should we keep it agitated to show it's dangerous and we need to stay out here? Or should we pacify it to show that we are in control of the, of the situation? That's my next question. I'm going to pick number two. Yeah. All right. Got it. But we did rip two out of the journals. Um, I think that's fine. I think ripping the two, because the two was just like, one was thank you HQ for, for shoving us out here. And the other one was HQ's ineptability at doing anything right. That was literally what the last, last page was. And I was like, we cannot have that at all. Nothing to say HQ is a bad guy. Ripping out the other one, probably not a great idea, but I don't think it's so bad. It just, we just ended on yeah, I think it still works. I mean, hold on. Let me check the journal again. We just ended on, here's what we did before we start the experiments. All right. Concerns about the future. Thoughts about the waste. There was a thought about the waste. Yeah, okay. We ripped it out, though. Um, apparently, I tore out all of that, and then we tore out everything about our own personal thoughts on everything. So we, we did rip out quite a bit of the journal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you didn't write anything at all? Like, no, I was focusing on experiments. That's why. Okay. I think it's okay. I don't know if that's the right answer, though. That being said, I think now we can keep that research as is, because I think that's important. But my question is, what should we do about the artifact? Should it stay agitated and dangerous, or should it be pacified, like we're in control? I think... I think we can't do anything about it. I think we're stuck with this. <laughs> Shoot. Well, we can't change our answer, so there we go. This is what we got. Do we think we're, I think we're good. I think this is literally all we can do. <laughs> I, every part of me is like crying right now. All right, I'm gonna, stress. First, we're gonna eat some stressed pineapples. All right, guys, I think this is all we can do. We ripped out everything we can. We tried to make it seem like we're important and the artifact is clearly dangerous, but we have everything under control. Oh. Mm hmm We're okay. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think we're ready, guys. I think we're ready. Mm-hmm. Alright. I think everything's ready, Jorge. I am so scared, guys. Good. All right, here we go. Get some rest. We'll need to be our, our sharpest when this visitor arrives. You coming? He says, I'd like to, a few minutes to gather my thoughts. Besides, someone needs to make sure the fire goes out. All right, good night, Jorge. All right, moment of truth, everyone. I can hear the company's vehicles. I can also hear a dam for some reason. <laughs> Look at how many choices there are in this. Oh my God. <laughs> you conducted research in order to understand it better. You and Jorge agreed the artifact should be contained in a secluded location studied by a team of experts and decided to emphasize our expertise. So I think I think we're okay. <laughs> Eli, replay stream. <laughs> no, I think not. But at this point, what we would end up doing is we have another chapter. So I'm going to end the stream here because it's almost three hours and my voice is almost gone. So thank everyone for joining me, including the lurkers, all of you guys sitting there. I hope you enjoyed the show. I really, really, really do. Please join me again on Friday where we will see if we did everything we were supposed to right. The cliffhanger is absolutely st st abs bonkers. Bonkers. Okay. So we'll be back on Friday at the same time to see where it is that we left off as far as this stream was concerned. I appreciate everyone for sticking around and seeing all of this and and helping get through the divorce section, which was like a lot, and then going into and dealing with 
everything else in it. Holy mackerel. Okay, so I will go ahead and open up uh, for the next like 15 seconds. If anyone has anyone that wants to join a stream to, if not, I have one that we can raid into since we have people for it. Stick around, say hi, um, all that kind of stuff, lurk, all that, whatever it is. Um, whew. Oh, I, <laughs> I just want to not fail the Eli story. That's it. The Eli story is the most stressful story of all four. I'm just saying. All right. So we are, <laughs> we are, we are going to de-stress. I'm going to go get some more drinks. Um, here we go. We are going to raid into... No, Estelle. From dealing with the divorce and the stress to fearing for our lives, what a game. This game holds no punches. I like their backbone game, but it but their backbone game is nothing compared to the writing they did there. They, like they did everything right in this game, in my opinion. And I'm loving every second of it, as stressful as it is. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna go to Nova Estelle. Alright. As, oh, I hit my microphone. Thank you all for joining. I thoroughly appreciate you all very, very much. And as always, uh, stay safe. And I look forward to seeing you again to continue from this cliffhanger. Uh, more tales on Friday. Good night, everyone. <laughs>